three, two, one. And ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the prosecution is not going to get that man today. No, because I'm going to get him. This is the Hagman and Hagman Report for today, Friday, December 7th, 2012. I'm Doug Hagman. With me is my co-host, Joe Hagman. He's my son. And you're about to hear three hours of unbiased and uncensored news, analysis, and information, folks, that we need to talk about in these very perilous times in which we live. If you're new to the broadcast, we broadcast live each and every weeknight from 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find us on the Internet at HomelandSecurityUS.com, and you can also watch us as well. We are simulcast in high-def video on the Christians United Broadcasting Network, and we want to thank Troy for uh, being there, being a, a supporter of, of our show, helping us out. God bless yeah, you, that's Troy, right. and uh, uh, God bless you. I mean, I'll tell you, the hardest-working guy I know. I mean, uh, upgrading, he's got all kinds of new equipment he's upgrading, too. He's really revamping everything. And uh, it's all wonderful. Uh, we can't thank you enough for doing that, Troy. Also, um, quick uh, announcement quick here. Notes, yep. Next Wednesday, December 12th, uh, we will have Pastor Lindsey Williams on. Now, is that going to be the first hour? It'll be. He'll be coming on. He's doing a radio show uh, our time uh, from 7 to 8, so he'll be on all right, right so around 8 o'clock. All right. Um, and I talked with him this evening, and... He's looking forward to coming on the show, and uh, it should be a great show. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you know Pastor Lindsey Williams. He's a guy that's on uh, with Alex Jones quite frequently. Uh, um, he's got a long history of the, of dealing with the, the insiders. Yeah, he was a, a pastor on uh, the oil. Um, right, right in Alaska. The, uh, for, I think Prudhoe. Uh, oil executives right. or the, the elite oil people. He was their pastor for a long time. He has insider sources, and he will be sharing some information with us, and it is very important information. One of the most important things, I think, is QE3 and what that is doing to our country. As I see financial news today, that is just staggering. Um, well, you know, one, one thing, um, I, I had uh, some dialogue with Pastor Lindsey Williams, and he said that uh, uh, in, fact, in fact, before the elections, I contacted him. He says, no, no, you know what? I don't want to come on your show. I wait until after the election. And, and I was kind of pressured. I kind of pressured him a little bit. I said, come on. No, we, I went Who here, is uh, Lindsay Williams. Oh, okay. okay. And, and I said, I want to hear what you have to say, what you, what you're going to say about the elections. And he said, no, I can't tell you right now. I just, I just can't tell you why or whatever. Anyway, um, he said right after the election, and, and I got an email from him um, uh, earlier in the week. He said right after the election, he had contacted one of his friends, still con is still within the uh, circle of the uh, uh, luminous, if you will, the elite people. And he asked the question, "What can we expect over the next four years?" All right. And at any rate, what he said was uh, the the information that he got was so startling that. Uh, he said, this is going to be the most startling thing anyone has ever heard since the U.S. was founded. And, and that's a pretty dramatic statement. And, and, and regardless of what you think of Lindsey Williams or what you think of the topics, it's pretty, it's pretty serious. He had, uh, uh, he had uh, done a two-DVD uh, series that he produced since the election. Uh, number one in the series of the next four years. Uh, it, it, in that DVD series... He writes it took three hours and twenty nine minutes to explain the information he received, and I kind of, I kind of chuckled, and and, I, and you know, I'm thinking, I can't believe that. <laughs> if you've ever heard Lindsey Williams talk, I can't believe that. And, and, and look, it's good natured ribbing, okay. But the second uh, DVD is how to survive the next four years. So that's two hours worth of information. So we're just going to condense that into about an hour. And I want to thank Joe for uh, arranging that interview. Thank you well, yeah. very much for that. Absolutely. Um, we got a lot of 
things to get into tonight, a lot of news. Uh, we, there's many earthquakes uh, today happening, a very high level of earthquakes. There's a 7.3 earthquake today uh, off the coast of Japan, and that's something we are watching. Also, we have a lot of economic and police state news. First thing I want to say, uh, i got to give uh, kudos, and, and i got to thank what are the government that I got to thank the government for the Department of Homeland Security. They okay. are doing their job, um, an, an outstanding. Uh, we, we always catch, have to have to, you know, as the Department of Homeland right, Security right. has seized thirty-five thousand rubber ducks. I mean, no. what could have happened if those hit the streets? Uh, you, Just imagine uh, the chaos. Um, that, that's a doggone good thing that they got. 35 thought now rubber ducks okay were they the big ones because look i ordered some from ebay for my bathtub because I, i've got this you know thing where I, I put the rubber ducks in the bathtub uh so they have not arrived yet and, and i'm very upset so were they the floatable kind well, what's what's going on what happened uh are, are they uh counterfeit rubber ducks or what well the u.s customs and border Patrol protection officers seized the ducks uh, dressed as snowman, gingerbread men, penguins, and reindeer, which were valued at $18,522 after determining that they contained chemical uh, phthalate, uh, P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E, in excess of the limit, which they may be harmful to children. Phthalates are used to make vinyl and other plastic, soft, and flexible materials. Uh, as these Ducks were coming in from China. They were detained by the customs at the port of Los Angeles. And I want to thank all of the hard uh, working men and women at the Department we're, of DHS who put strong. together this sting operation. Uh, no, it, it wasn't a, a grocery store. Okay. This was oh, all right. separate. All right. were, the, were the ducks armed? Uh, that's unconfirmed. They uh, they don't know. All right. Um, but we, we, at the very least, we know they were dangerous because the DHS confiscated them. But SWAT teams? I, I, I would suspect, perhaps. No, I don't think so. Uh, I think they just caught him at the border, had a little checkpoint set up there on the watch for him. And I remember a story last year where what they see hair dryers, <laughs> yeah, hair uh, like 12,000 hair dryers. Well, they are working yeah, hard yeah. for uh, those billions of dollars that they waste All every right. year. Well, so much for the levity in this broadcast. Um, folks, I don't know whether you know this, but uh, the Supreme Court is now going to take up the issue of gay marriage. Now, I use that term uh, only because that is what the headline reads in the New York Times. I prefer to uh, call it homosexual uh, marriage. Here, here's a deal, okay? And, and I just want to touch on this, and then uh, we're going to get into the other news. The Supreme Court today said that it would enter uh, the national debate over same-sex marriage, agreeing to hear a pair of cases challenging the state and federal laws that define marriage to include only unions of a man and a woman. Now, one of these cases is from California uh, that could establish or reject a constitutional right to same-sex marriage. Another case from New York. Interesting. Bookends. Left coast, right coast. The uh, case from New York challenges a federal law that requires the federal government to deny benefits to gay and lesbian couples married in states that allow such unions. All right, here's, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. You know the drill, all right? Now, here's my issue with this and our issue here at the Hagman and Hagman Report. Here's why this is important. Um, you, you know, I can go back to the program. We had John Price, Attorney John Price. He's the author of America at the Crossroads and, of course, The End of America, the role of the, the, the end of America. All right. When we had him on, we talked about this. And he was kind of a uh, uh, prophet in a way, saying that he would, that, that this issue would come up. The immorality of America would play the, into the role of our decline. Just, just let me give you some background here. And, and I think, you know, if, if you're like most of us, you will probably have either friends or family members who are homosexual and are in homosexual relationships or you know someone or the subject will come up. And, and a lot of times, well, a lot of times, if, you, if you're in a discussion, you just don't 
have the am- ammunition for the, you know, the background ammunition. And you get caught up or um, you fall victim to, at least I have in the past, fall victim to the talking points and all of this. Um, but yeah, but, but that, you know what happens. I mean? I mean, yeah, sometimes get, it happens when uh, we have so much going on, so many stories. Uh, we have uh, economical issues. We have domestic police state issues. We have things going on in other nations all across. There's instability all across the world. There are so much there's so many stories, important stories. Right. I mean, we talked about this before. Um, Ten years ago, you know, the news we see in one day today was equivalent to maybe a month's worth of news, you know, ten years ago. Well, uh, some of that is because of the available or accessibility of the Internet. Other, the other part of that is, of course, the uh, how fast everything is, is happening. But it, this is important because of, of the uh, immorality aspect, the judgment of God, the veil of protection, over the United States, Joe. I think, I think that part of that veil of protection, of course, you know, we're talking about uh, the blood sacrifice of abortion. Uh, we're talking about unjust wars, and we're also talking about uh, just general immorality of which the homosexual uh, issue is uh, is important. And if the Supreme Court decides in favor of homosexual unions, I mean, we we have to take a look at once again, where we're headed. But if you're involved in, in, a, uh, in a conversation, and if you don't know the history, you know, in 1986, we, the, the United States Supreme Court um, upheld the right of states to adopt sodomy laws. So in 1986, we had a Supreme Court that said, you know what, it's up to the states, all right, uh, to, to make their own sodomy laws. That, that was Bowers versus Hardwick, all right? Now, uh, in that opinion, Chief Justice Warren Berger wrote that society had historically held negative attitudes towards homosexual sex. And he quoted Sir William Blackstone's description of sodomy as a crime not fit to be named. Now, think about that. That was 1986, a crime not fit to be named. To hold that the act of a or the act of homosexual sodomy, is somehow protected as a fundamental right would be to cast aside millennia of moral teaching. How does that ring? Does that ring true to you? I mean, it does not ring true to you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it does. Well, in, in 17 years, and, and, and think of, well, go ahead. No, go ahead and finish what you're saying, because well, i got to quote that back to all right, back well, up what you're saying. That was in 1986. 17 years later, in 2003, the Supreme Court directly overruled Bowers versus Hardwick in the case of Lawrence v. Texas, and they cast aside millennia of moral teaching. Now, the oral argument before the court, Justice Scalia said from the bench that some were arguing the case had nothing to do with the same-sex marriage. Scalia said, don't you believe it? Before Lawrence, same-sex marriage was rarely, if ever, mentioned in public discourse. Now, that's according to... And Scalia wrote, too, that laws against persons of the same gender marrying were sustainable only in light of Bauer's validation of laws based on moral, moral choices. And he predicted that the floodgates would open to same-sex marriage with the invalidation of the sodomy laws that uh, that were ruled uh, back in '86. So, as soon as that happened, he was proven correct. Massachusetts, Connecticut, Vermont, Rhode Island, Maine, Iowa—they've authorized uh, persons of the same gender to marry. In 2008, California narrowly defeated an effort to authorize same-sex marriage in that state. Uh, but, 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 but here's the thing. Um, what just a few short years ago was not even discussed. You didn't even bring it up. It's not, it's not even polite dinner table discussion. It's now the law in some jurisdictions. And now we have the Supreme Court that will most likely make it the law of the land. So think, folks, 1963, Roe v. Wade, the abortion issue. 
and how that just really ripped into the moral fabric of America. Well, two, 2012, 2013, will this not rip into the moral fabric of our country even more? Is this not what the communists want? What the socialists want? Is this not the spirit of the Antichrist? Is this not the spirit of, of the most perverse, pathetic thing on earth? I mean, Sodom. A city. A city was named after the act of sodomy and it was destroyed by God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think about that. At this point, we have laws that are redefining marriage, not reinforcing marriage, redefining biblical marriage, not reinforcing it. Don't you think redefining it, that the, that, that the, they're destroying, destroying, destroying the family, right. the destroying morality. And we sit back and we say, Hey, not a problem. Well, we might not say it's not a problem. Of course, our audience knows, but the majority of Americans don't understand the ramifications. No, what's going to take place and what the consequences for our actions are, and we as a public must make our voices heard. Yeah, most of the American people are only interested in their little sphere, not interested in, in the truth. Um, and when they are paying attention to the news, uh, promoting or advocating a cause, it usually is only to support their own belief system or ideology never about the truth. Even if the truth conflicts with your belief system, you still have to tell the truth. Um, you know, your belief system, as uh, people say this, when your uh, belief system and reality crash, you're, you know, that's when you begin to wake up. But so many people won't let that happen because they're just completely uh, scared or they don't want to believe it. In the description for tonight's show, Destroyed by Design, um, I wrote, you know, the USA, land of the free, home of the brave, is gone forever. Many will argue otherwise, saying there's still hope. Others say we're in a recovery, while the rest who are a majority don't think anything is wrong. The few who are aware understand the danger of living in a nation controlled by a tyrannical government. History has and will continue to repeat itself. No country is safe. And democide, death by government, is uh, the constant outcome. And yes, it can happen here. And, and it that, has happened here. Well, yeah, it is happening here. And um, uh, this was said by William Penn. A people who will not be ruled by God are destined to be ruled by tyrants. <laughs> Also, yep. John Adams said the republic is for a Christian people. It will serve no other. And we see how far away from these principles we have have become, have gotten. On the other side, we see somebody from the, new, or the Council on Foreign Relations, people who designed the New World Order. He says, we are not going to achieve a New World Order without paying for it in blood, as well, in other words, in money. They plan on instituting a new world order. Uh, the sovereignty of the United States is being given to the United Nations, and uh, we are going to suffer. Everybody's going to suffer. No nation is safe from the new world order. No nation is safe from That's why they call the unleashing it of Satan on the, the world order. Right. It's not the... But no but, people, no right. rich or poor. It doesn't matter. But, but you know, Joe, we're, we're we're talking about this new world order, and, and ladies and gentlemen, you think about this. We're also looking at the union of, or the marriage union, the North American union, I suppose, between Mexico, Canada, and the United States. This is something that we've been looking at too. Um, you, you know, because of the economic situation, which we're going to get into tonight, uh, I believe, right? There's, there's problems in the economy. I thought we were in the uh, recovery. Like, you know, it, it, and I'm this confused. is something. Uh, yeah, I know it's so easy to be confused with this. This is something I'm I'm uh, doing a re, uh, an investigative report on, uh, an article on. Um, 
Look, folks, uh, I, I, I've got a photograph I took in my hometown. Uh, it's about 600 miles from where uh, Hurricane Sandy made landfall. And, and this was about uh, the day or two before it actually struck. And, and uh, this surprised me. And, and, you know, this photograph shows, and, and I'll be putting this up, I'll be finishing this article sometime uh, after the show and putting it up uh, in the next, uh, probably the next several hours. But uh, And that's at homelandsecurityus.com. But, but, folks, think about this. You know, the whys among us will consider when we look at that picture, we're, we would we we do well to consider that it's a glimpse into our not too distant future. Because there's another superstorm in our forecast, but it's not weather related, nor will it be geographically isolated. And unlike the weather forecasters, ample and dire warnings to prepare for Hurricane Sandy. Remember that it was constant. The public is not being warned about the formation of the superstorm we're seeing right now. In fact, we're not, not only are we not being warned, we are being deliberately and knowingly, we're being given a false forecast. Yes, and th this is uh, one of the Satan's greatest advantages is the uh, willful ignorance of the people and also that being reinforced by the controlled media, the controlled political system, uh, the oh, brainwashing it's a, it's, yes, kids it's a, through television, yes. music, the morality that has been attacked. It is listed under the communist goals in 1963. Communism plans and planned publicly to destroy the morality of America. Well, with regard to this, with, with everything going on, Look, this storm that we're that's been brewing now it's not been it's not been brewing for days or, or weeks or even months. It's been years and decades in the planning. Yeah. And we right now we're looking at the outer wall of the storm. It's about to hit us. The weather forecasters in the form of a compromised state run media subservient to their selected messiah. The the weather forecasters in the form of a compromised state-run media subservient to their selected messiah. They're still calling for clear skies with a light, warm breeze. But those of us who are paying attention, you know, us old people with arthritis, you know, you're, you feel your knees and your joints ache when the low-pressure system comes and it rains. Well, those of us paying attention to our own barometers and other predictive indicators, we know otherwise. It's not going to be sunny and warm. There's not going to be a pleasant breeze. But to the delight of the weather manipulators, these opposing forecasts, ours and theirs, they're creating confusion within the population. Skies show no even the signs of ominous or even inclement weather. The forecasters are saying it's going to be fine. Yet yeah, our joints ache. Yet we know from our own signs that the storm is, is approaching. And anyone searching for the truth within these dueling forecasts, eva evaluating all of the all of the available evidence with, with any degree, any degree of intellectual honesty, they're going to undoubtedly conclude that this super storm, as well as the path, is man-made. And it's difficult, folks, for me, for Joe, for all of us, really. It's difficult to believe that, that the destruction and death that's going to come of this. Have you ever heard of his deliberate? Of George Chisholm? I don't, I don't know. Why? Okay. Um, he was a communist. And he's, one of his quotes, uh, he's the father of public school philosophy. Uh, hating God. To achieve world government, it is necessary to remove the, from the minds of men their individualism, loyalty to family tradition, national patriotism, and religious dogmas. He said that in a speech given to the Conference on Education in California in September of 1954. Well, if I can find my notes here, I've got uh, the uh, individual talking about, or the individual behind the public school system that's celebrated, uh, so celebrated, now I'm trying to think of his name, um, uh, same name as Governor of New York. Uh, and, and tonight, uh, I want 
to do this while covering news, I want to go through um, some quotes, some examples in history, because uh, like I read in the description of the episode, we are in a situation where uh, many have been before, and the results have been the same over and over and over. Uh, we only have a few more steps to go, disarmament of the people, and an, an economic collapse, and then we are at the mercy of our government, who, on basically public record, wants us dead. Now, you know, the New World Order um, is a term uh, that was created, and it means exactly that, a new world order. Everything consolidated, no b borders or boundaries, no countries or nations, no sovereignty, no individualism. And, and their, their, their objective is to, is to dethrone God, destroy capitalism, yeah. just like Karl Marx. By the way, deliberately bankrupt, right. and destroy. Now, when you mentioned about public schools, John Dewey, I just want, I, I couldn't think of the name before, John Dewey, uh, he was involved, he celebrated in public education in Really, what, 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 the thing with John Dewey is, um, he really put the socialism, socialism agenda at play into the public uh, education system. Children are the first targets. Children are the first targets. Of course. That's where, that, 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 it, you know, f folks, one of the really major problems we have, and you've got to understand this, schools today, are not the same as they were when we went there. Now, schools are no longer places where you learn history, mathematics. Schools are now places where you are told what to think, not encouraged to think for yourself. Well, Vladimir Lenin, a name all of you might know, said, give me four years to teach the children, and the seed I have sown will never be uprooted. Now, think about that. Isn't that what's happening today? Vladimir Lenin, give me four years to teach the children, and the seed I have sown will never be uprooted. There you go. But see, this New World Order, that their objective is to take God out of schools, take God out of everything, capture our children, reprogram them, program them, reprogram them. Yeah. No matter what you do at home, it's not going to be good enough because and they're going to be mind controlled at school absolutely are they they are being mind controlled at school and we went through the information and the history of how the department of education became um uh, an agency and the communist roots i mean it's it was a communist idea the department of education came from a communist from some something a, a communist wrote in a book yeah uh, and it was put into place and it has changed the entire curriculum and the uh, basis on how or in, and what the uh, schools teach the children. It is no longer, I mean, even in, in my uh, school years, I can't say that um, it was much different. I'm sure it's a lot worse now, but uh, I never remember uh, learning real true history. And history was one of my, I was terrible in school because of my behavior. Uh, I was a bad child. Yes, and yes, he was. I can verify that. But when it came to history, uh, that was something that I always did well in, no matter studying or not. Uh, but I can attest to that too. What has happened, um, and, and of all the evil that is done to us, all the subliminal and overt attacks, what is really at the heart of the matter is the people. Um, falling for it, accepting it, and the the moral subversion and the lack of Americans recognizing it and trying to fix it. I mean, even the lack of morality in each individual people's lives. If they're not trying to better themselves spiritually, they are definitely part of the problem. Well, it, we look, one of the big things with our school system is the National Education Association. Everybody loves the National Education Association. Well, back in '09, I think it was, or a couple of years ago now, they made this glowing assessment, this glowing recommendation of Saul Alinsky and his 
don't forget Saul Alinsky was a community organizer and a radical socialist, just a rabid socialist. And but but the NEA said, look, you've got to read his book. You've got to read Saul Alinsky's book, yeah. Rules for Radicals. It, it, the 1946 book about the principles and tactics of community organizing. Uh, I'm sorry, that that was a, another book uh, uh, that that was written. Uh, uh, by Alinsky, I don't recall the title, but but 1971 rules for radicals that articulated a social strategy for gaining political power to redistribute wealth from the haves to the have-nots. The NEA stood behind that and told the teachers of every public school in this country to read it and to and, and to to adopt its principles. And of course, that book, as we know, has a dedication to who? To Satan, to Lucifer. Yeah, and they mean it. I mean, it, who who would do such a thing? Dedicate a book to to Lucifer, uh, somebody who obviously is a Satanist and uh, is the worst of the worst. Um, have you heard of Vla- Vladimir Lenin? Gee, no, I haven't. <laughs> no, uh, his he said at one time, the best revolutionary is a youth devoid of morals. Going back to your point, uh, right? Well, you know, again, Lenin says, "Give me four years to teach the children, and uh, the seed I have sown will never be uprooted." So this is at play right now, and we are we are we are getting uh, marriage re- is re- being redefined in schools. You're you're having uh, the teachers teach about homosexuality in in a positive right. light under the the guise of tolerance. We all know this, folks. You know, you know what's going on. But now we've got the Supreme Court that's about that, that will, when they discuss this, I do suspect uh, they're going to make this the law of the land. And when they make this the law of the land, how much more of that veil of protection from God is going to be taken uh, taken away from us? Let how me much ask, more? Let me ask you this: even aside from the Supreme Court's decision, what we've seen in churches changing the definition of marriage and husband and wife. To persons, um, it's happening in churches. They are allowing and uh, in, in voting. I know the, the Presbyterian Church had a, had it up for a vote, um, as well as allowing clergymen who are homosexuals to serve as clergymen. The churches are now changing their laws and belief systems. Some churches say, "Yeah, uh, you know, it, we'll, we'll marry homosexuals, and it's okay." Uh, why Oregon or Washington State last week right. is saying they're changing the the status and the def- names on the marriage licenses instead of husband and wife to person A or person B because they don't want to gender discriminate because you can have you know two dads or two moms but what is uh, different there has always been homosexuality never at this level I don't think uh, but there. I'm sure it's been written about in the Bible and history, so it's been around. But when has a nation who claims to be a nation under God pr- promoting it, has, you know, defending it, as well as abortions, as rights? Well, you've got the uh, the Anglican Church of Canada right now embracing same-sex marriages, embracing homosexual marriages. You've got the uh, uh, Episcopal Church USA saying, Come on down. Um, it, it's, folks, we are, we are so far away from the the very beginning of, uh, away from morality. You know, yeah. It's it's few it's parents far, realize. It, um, few parents that indeed. the engineers of the school's philosophy uh, are God hating, family hating, demented sociopath uh, people. They are people who have a uh, ideology of destruction, destruction of your family, destruction of your uh, religious belief system, destruction of this economy, this country, this nation. Morality is our greatest strength as a country. There's been war declared against a nuclear family. And, and that's where we're at, and, and that's what we have to. We, it's not only war against the nuclear family, but war against God. Uh, this nation is at war with God, and when I say this nation, I'm talking the about majority. Well, that and the leaders of this nation that the uh, the the morons elected. 
and um, you know we're working toward a Soviet America. Yeah, and as as outlined in the book by William Foster, you see the Gallup poll yesterday that said fifty three percent of people polled say socialism is a good idea. I mean, this is where how far the brainwashing has taken us. Well, Clinton, a uh, few people really remember Clinton. Uh, really, uh, he studied the. Uh, Oh goodness! What was it? The uh, Professor Carol Quigley, uh, tragedy and hope. I mean, both Bill and uh, Hillary Clinton were students of Carol Quigley, Professor Carol Quigley, in in terms of the ideology there, and uh, also the Gramsci, Antonio Gramsci, this neo Marxist philosopher, the students of uh, Antonio Gramsci. Now, there is a destruction of the West by destroying our culture. And, of course, that went right along with the Frankfurt School of Cultural Marxism, the European socialism that's been introduced into this country. And as you go back in time, you can see from FDR to I mean, forward, it's just it's ridiculous. Here's a quote from Benjamin Franklin. This government shall last and not fall into despotism, as others before have done until the people, having become so corrupted as to need despotic rule, being incapable of no other form of government. Well, and that's what we have are, and are seeing today. Um, uh, infiltration. Um, Thomas Jefferson talked about the banking institutions infiltrating the uh, our country and gaining control of the flow of currency, the inflation and deflation, the value of the dollar, our livelihood. Um, and he was right. We know the founding fathers in the history of fighting these international banks and banking organizations up until Woodrow Wilson instituted the Federal Reserve in 1913, followed by the IRS being implemented, which really was the beginning to the end of the free market and private property, and many other rights that uh, so many have fought and died for and enjoyed uh, in the short time our country's been around. Our country right. was uh, the most prosperous nation in the history of the world because of the freedoms that were given to the people here. They were able to create. Um, they are entrepreneurs, pioneers. Now it is just regulation. I mean, you didn't build that. <laughs> you know, uh, this is the mentality. Uh, you didn't. You, know, you got to pay your fair share. Um, th- these people have a ideology where communism is just a tool of the new world order, like uh, Muslims or um, you know any other uh, corrupt organization. But what they all serve the same purpose in doing uh, is attacking these issues and, you know, finding a way to fit them into the news broadcast, the TV shows for kids, adults, teenagers, the music. What I find fascinating is people who go to church and call themselves Christian. Uh, I, I see them watching, you know, those zombie shows all the time. Of course. I see them listening zombies, to, whatever. you know, uh, they're listening to music on the top four, Billboard Top 40. All these artists are pretty much sold their souls. They they sing about, uh, you know, the devil, and it's well documented. They sing about godlessness. Uh, in one of the songs, a popular song called New York, I remember this specifically from being in New York so much, they played it all the time. Uh, Jay-Z, a well-known Satanist, said in a song, uh, Jesus can't save you. Life starts when the church ends. Isn't and that put that problem? into a song right. glorifying New York City. And that's just one example in one song. And you can go through you know, all music and TV and movies, and you can find these little innuendos and subliminal messages. And, uh, you know, they're there. And Well, what we're facing in a nutshell is the cultural transformation, or I, as I would put it, the cultural destruction of America uh, as as we opened with the uh, uh, same sex, the homosexual marriage agenda, uh, that's at play here. 
uh, promoting a socialist agenda, especially a cultural transformation. That's a first step to, toward communism. And uh, most people, most progressives, most people on the left, most people that adhere to that ideology are the very people uh, that Lenin called useful idiots, uh, the, the people that speak of tolerism for the sake of tolerism and the heck with morality, those are the useful idiots. Communism is what we're in ultimately facing. Communism is going to be the one world order or the new world order. That's a final phase, and that's the goal of socialism. And socialism, of course, is uh, a product of big government. What are we seeing right now? Well, I'm we're seeing centralization as well, which is, a, which is the ultimate goal. Sorry for interrupting. I wanted to correct you. Uh, communism will not be the, the end game of, uh, or won't be the government, but it will appear that way. Uh, it will be similar. As the Bible describes it, I believe that this will be a beast, a government like no other in the history of the earth. Well, to, to best describe it, however, and without getting into the semantics, I mean, you're talking about a communist system of government where speech is, is uh, freedom of speech is no longer. You've got um, you've got various uh, nuances with respect to that, but but that, that's fine. But the, but the history of this over the last 25 years, uh, we've really been been put on the fast track. Like I said, with with uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton, they're still in power. There'd be still in power behind Obama. It's st what started with Karl Marx and went through the Students uh, for a Democratic Society (SDS) branched out into the Frankfurt School, the uh, uh, the various uh, uh, the issues of political correctness and cultural Marxism that led to moral relativism, social justice. These are all just euphemisms for uh, tearing down the moral fabric of our country, Multi multiculturalism, and that speaks to the uh, education aspect of this country. You've got, uh, uh, I mean, my goodness, Obama is connected to uh, people like uh, uh, Reverend Jim Wallace, W-A-L-L-I-S, who's connected to SDS, which is just a stone throw from Karl Marx. Uh, and of course, Wallace is connected to the Cloward Piven uh, strategy and Saul Alinsky and Antonio Gramsci. Folks, if you don't know who these people are, do some research and, and, and look in for yourself to find out the basis for what we're seeing take place today. This is what is exactly um, what is uh, taking place. Uh, Cloward and Piven, you know, working on the crisis strategy, the weight of the poor, throwing that throwing kind of a mon monkey wrench into the system. And, and we also have to give credit to, to the feminist movement, the homosexual movement, which we're seeing really uh, uh, coalesce right now, the radical and, support for that. In 1963, the communist goals, number 26, reads, present homosexuality, a degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. And that's right. And we are exporting that. Uh, as you know, it's, it's one thing that John Price said: we're exporting that homosexual out, homosexuality to other countries. Netherlands was first, I believe, but the United States is actually uh, exporting the homosexual agenda to other countries as well. And, and I, I've seen some recent quotes after looking at the Supreme Court uh, who are going to decide this. Um, uh, even some of the third world countries of the leaders are saying, "Look, this is a sick." perverse agenda that shouldn't be here. But we've got a lot of other news, too, including Damascus. And, and I just want to... Yes. Uh, Isaiah 17. Isaiah chapter 17. Do you want me to read one, a few of the first headlines before you get into that? Well, I just want to read this. And then okay. from looking... Or it's very quick, this one verse. And then from this one verse, folks, think about what we're seeing from this one verse. Isaiah 17, one uh, uh, verse 1 and 2. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. The cities are forsaken. They will be for flocks which lie down, and no one will be, no one will make them afraid. It's biblical. Damascus will become a ruinous heap. So from that, what, what kind of headlines are we seeing right now? Right. And I have a question about that. And, and um, is it a, will it be a instant ruinous heap or are we seeing it now? It, are that, we, because it, we've seen so many buildings and the cities 
basically half destroyed right now. No, it's, war it, it, it's it's according to the biblical prophecy, and this gets into the uh, coming Psalm eighty three war against Israel, and, and we really researched this very very carefully, and uh, essentially we're looking at what Bill Salas presented in his book Israelistine. It's going to become a ruinous heap overnight. In other words, uh, according to biblical prophecy, according to what's in the Bible, according to Scripture, you're going to go to bed one night. The city of Damascus will be flourishing. People will be going to and fro. Stores will be selling things. Cars will be running. And the next morning, it's going to be dust. It's going to be that quick. That's what we're talking about. And, and if, for people to, to really get an idea of, what, uh, of, of what's going on, uh, you know, it's interesting because, folks, we have watched, we have sat back and watched from the very beginning of this Arab Spring. Obama siding with the Muslim Brotherhood. Obama put himself, or Obama directed, orchestrated the assassination of Gaddafi in Libya. Obama did nothing to stop Arab Spring as it spread across the Middle East. Obama aided the Muslim Brotherhood in Yemen with airstrikes. Obama convinced the G8 to give the Muslim Brotherhood $8 billion for Arab Spring. Meanwhile, this liberal, progressive, state-run, captured operational media whose messiah is Barack Hussein Obama, the liberal media aided Obama by wholeheartedly embracing the Arab Spring, saying to everyone, it's good, it's a good thing. It's the exportation of democracy, let the people decide. While he was putting his own rulers in. And after taking over Egypt, Obama then publicly declared the United States Muslim Brotherhood Partnership. And look at what we have with that partnership. So you see where this is, how things are shaping up here. Have, have, yeah. you know, through these communist tactics, um, just an example, we were talking about education. Um, and I want to thank, again, um, Ron for the, his book, It's Over. He writes in here uh, that we have simply allowed uh, the NEA, the NTO, and all their state teacher unions and political mouthpieces to take over the schools and to destroy the children. Teacher unions are the very best examples of why uh, you, unions quickly outstrip their reasons to exist. And this is uh, true. The, the, the unions and the ties to communism, um, the way that the, was the hammer and sickle, see, I'm still kind of young. I'm not, I don't remember uh, the coming down of the Berlin Wall, the uh, symbolism that that, the importance that that held as a symbol around the world as the, the ending of um, a it, it was it symbolized the ending of a, a really a communist well it, it symbol okay the berlin wall when it came down of course people thought well we the were, cold we war. succeeded yeah we won the cold war we succeeded okay. in destroying communism when yeah. in fact that was not the case that's what i i thought that that's what that kind of symbolized right and and if anything um it's underground it's in, we are, we have been infiltrated and a founding father said, you know, if this nation is destroyed, it won't be from outside enemy. It will be destroyed from within. And we are seeing that today. And it is no coincidence that a man who cannot even prove he's eligible to be president is in office. That is a big sign to me. I don't know why I don't believe he is the lawless one. Um, but, uh, well, the, no, the, the, but the way that he, Attained, obtained his presidency, lying every step of the way. Even the first time he was asked about it publicly, when he said, no, I just was elected to Senate, I'd have to start my campaign right away, and I don't believe in doing that. Um, that was a lie, obviously, because he ran for president the next year. And, and who his, his inauguration, him up? I mean, we had to talk about his inauguration well, tonight. Yes, we, we, and folks, we've got some questions about that. But, but I mean, look who probably, Alice Palmer, uh, the, the, the very people in Chicago, the progressives, the communists, we're looking at a, a, a congressional progressive caucus that are filled with communists. And, and, and boy, I, I, I suppose if Chris Matthews 
or Ed Schultz ever heard me say that, they wouldn't like me too much. But but think about it: this organizing for America that Obama is so much a part of, and yeah, prompted him up. These, it's all communists. It's all slogans from within. The organizing of America. They they are organizing, but it's not anything decent or good or something you want to be a part of. They're organizing the destruction of America as we knew it. Well, and, into and, an and international. This, and, and this is why the, the, the Denver Post back in June of 2008 re- reported that paganism, paganism is doubling every year and a half. Yeah. Okay. And, and they're a world of Christianity. It, and it's sad because paganism is tied into Christianity uh, with the days the uh, in America, the days we go to church and well, uh, there's a lot the holidays of holidays, and uh, but even if you remove that and, and just look <laughs> at paganism for what it is, and and, it, and how it's attached to things like environmentalism and the worship yeah. of the of the earth for crying out loud, uh, environmentalism, for example, is a tool to further the socialist agenda. It's government control of energy. It's control uh, of all the most intimate aspects of our lives. In Gore, after writing The Earth in the Balance, the last chapter, a global uh, moral plan. Um, uh, Communism and fascism. It's crazy. I mean, this report today, 73% of new jobs created in the last five months are in government. So, yep, uh, this is according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. In June, a total of 142 million uh, people were employed in the U.S., according to the uh, BLS, including 19, almost 20 million people who were employed by federal, state, and local governments. By November, the total number of people employed climbed uh, from 142 to 143.2 and jump of 800,000 in six months. In the same five-month period since June, the number of employed by government has increased by 621,000. So these 621,000 new government jobs created in the last five months equals 73.3% of the 847,000 jobs created overall. Okay, America is an economic decline, and this is one of the things that we're beginning to decline. I mean, they're on on a roller coaster going downhill, um, you know, that doesn't have, that's not finished. I mean, they're, we're, we're, it's, it's always... It's not no longer a, a matter of if; it's a matter of when well, and how. You know, the, because it's unsustainable with the debt. You can't. That's right. We it, have new regulations. We have new agencies. Uh, things are changing so rapidly. They are clamping down on certain areas, and they are conditioning and testing other areas where they are going to clamp be clamping down next. Food freedom. Um, that's right. The Food Safety Modernization Modernization Act S five ten which makes it illegal to buy or sell or trade seeds and other... You're, you're not going to be able to do anything without governments having some sort right. of uh, action over you. you know, to the be, point where you couldn't even leave your house okay. pretty soon. Pretty much. Back uh, The Economist magazine, uh, for those familiar with that publication, uh, The Economist magazine said that the United States was the best place in the world to be born. That was back in 1988. The U.S., best place to be born... And they used a number of factors to arrive at that conclusion. Where is it today? We're number 16 on the list. Yeah, 16. And that's the freest business uh, or the uh, business environment, the freest in, Everything. The, in the world? Okay. Everything. It's all, it's morta- infant mortality, it's health care, it's, it's, uh, um, it's, it's heavy on the economy, and so on. But, but number 16. You know, uh, the uh, right now, uh, just to give you an example of where we are economically, more than three times as many new homes were sold in 2005 as will be sold in 2012. So we're uh, by a third, we're falling uh, in terms of new home sales, and that's a big indicator, folks. We once held, by the way, uh, some of the greatest manufacturing cities and the greatest manufacturing on the face of the planet. Yeah. We were a big manufacturing. Uh, Look, now Detroit, for example, they're going to go bankrupt. They, they are bankrupt. I okay. mean, we were, like I said, the most prosperous nation. Um, that we were so innovative. The uh, people were, were had the freedoms to 
take risks and um, you know go where no people have gone before because there was that freedom there where they didn't have to go through the red tape. They didn't have to make sure uh, you know they had their uh, Obamacare situated and their uh, equal employer rights and all these different things that in theory sound good, but are, there are tools and mechanisms to destroy the freedom of businesses. And even further than businesses, is private property. Uh, well, wait, let's stick with businesses for a second, because I, th- I think that we, we glossed over that. Because w- let's, let's look at this. I mean, <laughs> un- unemployment rate uh, in 2007 for people from 20 to 30, uh, 20 to tw- uh, ages 20 to 30, Back in 2007, that unemployment rate was officially at 6.5%. Today, officially, it's about 13%. Of course, watered down as, as with with other numbers, it comes to that fictitious number of around 8%, which is more like 25%, but that's it. Right, and you remember before the election, they lowered the unemployment rate on paper right. to make they, the they, they, look they, better. They changed the, the, it's the they, they're using the U6 yeah. system instead of the... the right. One system that right now, the government is borrowing 46 cents for every dollar it spends and $4.8 billion per day, $168 per family <clears throat> um, is how much welfare costs uh, in America per day. Well, speaking of welfare or entitlements, now, when I say entitlements, I, I, I'm talking about, uh, I'm not talking about people who have paid into the system, no. Uh, for example, one out of every four American children today are on food stamps. Forty-seven point one million Americans have are on food stamps. Um, yeah, and, you know, that, and, and that increased in three years from thirty point eight uh, November of oh eight. It was thirty point eight. Today it's forty-seven point one. George Bush doubled the number of recipients of welfare under his eight-year term. Obama has done the same and those numbers don't represent the number of people dependent on food stamps because uh there might be 40 some million people on food stamps but uh those food stamps feed their families uh which you know you could easily double or even triple that number to well, look at the number of people right. dependent on food stamps and, and, and i guess the biggest teller or the biggest sign of the economy where we're at with the economy is is when the when the fed when the federal reserve was created and and the fiat money became uh, came into existence, the false money that we're now using, mm-hmm. the dollar, since that day, since the day that the Federal Reserve was created, what's it, what's the dollar worth today? It's worth four cents. It's worth less than ninety eight percent of what it was in nineteen thirteen. Some say ninety eight, and some say ninety six. So it could be four to two cents. I mean, it could be worth as little as two cents, as much as four cents, but it's not worth anything more than four cents. Right. Meaning, you know, a hundred dollar bill um, now it's four bucks. Yeah, two bucks, two four bucks, bucks, whatever. It's absolutely just disgusting to think about how they did this. And not only, it's not just the Federal Reserve. Um, it's not just the government. It is the indifference of the people. It is the lack of involvement, the lack of care and concern for the well-being of others besides themselves and their little circles. Meanwhile, Obama is what? He's going to be taking a 20-day, him and Michelle and the kids. Uh, five, 20, for $20 million vacation to Hawaii? Yeah, 20-day yeah. vacation in Hawaii. Or $4 million 20-day. Well, let, let me ask you, your listeners. When's the last time you took a 20-day vacation? To You know what? I, I, and I can honestly say this, and it's not pity me, but I don't believe in 25, in the last 25 years, I don't believe I've taken a 20 days worth of vacation. I've taken um, <laughs> my three, four-day honeymoon, my mini honeymoon. Uh, yeah, the Cleveland. Was my last, uh, Toledo. Toledo. But I didn't tell you this, uh, which I'll share it after the show. I do have a plan for the summer where it was a wedding, a late wedding present, a, really a blessing we received this week. Um, and I'll tell you about that later. But uh, yeah, Toledo for four days. And then if you count you and me going out of town for work um, as vacation. Well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't I mean, really think sitting in a uh, surveillance van in uh, the middle of Brooklyn when it's 105 degrees and you got the uh, roving, uh, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't mean, consider that vacation. And, and of course, you know, you, you don't stay in Manhattan. You, you stay in Brooklyn and, 
at, at these hotels that, uh, um, you know. Yeah, and I, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining here because uh, this is wonderful. The only vacation, the only real vacation I ever taken uh, was when my grandparents were alive. They took us to Disneyland when I was in third grade, and uh, we were gone for 10 days. And I remember so much of that trip, but that was the only time I flew. That was the only time I, I was on vacation. And, and I remember your grandparents saved and saved and saved for that. Yeah. Just to they take you. They cashed in coins. And, yeah. You know, to, I mean. Uh, By the way, I was not invited. I just want to let you know that <laughs> I was not invited to that, but that was fun. I mean, but people can't even ima- imagine trying to do that with your kids now. Um, when I was in Toledo, we went to Cedar Point. Uh, parking, like $50. Tickets, a hundred and some dollars. No, oh, yeah, you know it's yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. crazy. Families can't point. afford to do it, and really, it, um, it is good to get away. But it, it, twenty days, you're the president of the United States. You have a fiscal cliff looming. Uh, you don't. This. How many years has Obama just continued to push the debt issue away? Never solves it. Never addresses it. Just but passes folks, the bus. Not and then they play Obama. on the news. The partisan game. Oh, it's right. the Republicans' fault. Oh, it's the Democrats' fault. It's both. It's both. We have lost the political will. The people, the, our elected leaders, have lost their political will, and the American people have failed to hold our leaders accountable for that. Folks, you're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report for this fabulous Friday edition, the seventh day of December, 2012, the anniversary of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. That is a story in and of itself. We're right back after these messages. Stay with us. Hi folks, Doug Hagman here. You might know me as the co-host from the Hagman and Hagman Report or as our frequent guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Nori. If you're like me, you're tired and confused over today's headlines. You just don't know where to turn for accurate, concise information about really what's going on, what's truly going on in today's society. If you don't know where to turn for accurate, well-researched and properly vetted news, I've got a suggestion. In fact, it's a requirement. Bookmark Canada Free Press. That's CanadaFreePress.com on the Internet. It's just not for Canada. It's for news across the world. Judy McLeod, founding editor, has put together a vast array of talented writers like Kelly O'Connell, Daniel Greenfield, Dr. Eileen johnson Powell, a lot of guest columnists, very talented writers. Folks, that's Canada Free Press at CanadaFreePress.com. Now mobile-friendly, follow on Facebook, because without America, there is no free world. Survival of the fittest. In any and all situations, survival is your number one priority. That requires being tough and thinking smart. And the folks at Freeze Dry Guy are going to help you do just that. They have a long-range patrol ration entrees, what they call the Brick Pack. When you're in survival mode, it is absolutely the best item for your survival pack or bug-out bag. You can go farther, faster, and carry more food with the LRP cold weather ration entrees. Not only do these long-lasting, durable entrees help sustain you or your family through the harshest environment or situation, they are by far the most delicious of their kind. No contest. With a variety of tasty entrees, you can't beat the LRP Brick Packs. Let Freeze Dry Guy help you in your survival situations. Go to freezedryguy.com. That's freezedryguy.com. Or call 866-404-3663. That's 866-404-FOOD. You better wake up fast and listen to this, America. The Obama campaign has launched attack squads disguised as truth teams dedicated to intimidating and silencing all political dissent carried over the Internet that criticizes the Marxist Obama. Truth squads specifically focused on covering up Obama's endless trail of lies, corruption, and subversion, and using the Gestapo power of our own government to police and censor the Internet and shut down websites that dare to carry the real truth about Obama's Marxist coup. Remember the names of these Gestapo-style agencies at work right there in your neighborhood. KeepingHisWord.com, KeepingGOPHonest.com, and AttackWatch.com. 
KGB, SS, and Gestapo-style police state gangster organizations at work to silence the important voices of patriot dissent, some of which have already been shut down by Obama's orders. Adolf Hitler would have been proud. We're the 21st Century Tea Party Patriots. Hold on to your seat. The Hagman and Hagman flight is now taking off. Doug and Joe Hagman have cleared the runway of TSA agents, jihadists, political crackpots, and global elitists. Now get ready for some real news. Here they are, Doug and Joe Hagman. And welcome back, folks. Welcome back. Welcome back to a fabulous Friday, December 7th, 2012. Fabulous Friday. Fabulous Friday. It is always a great day as long as we are still breathing. It is. Able to broadcast and are joined by all of you wonderful people out there. Folks, our website is homelandsecurityus.com. That's homelandsecurityus.com. And I want to I want to say this. Um, we are going to be doing a, a lot of upgrades this weekend it is my intent i've been saying that now for a number of weeks but it's just been every single day has been has been a day of just nothing but uh, uh attempting to get the latest about benghazi and about the various things in in inside america uh but in the meantime in in, in spite of all that folks i want to say this canada free Press.com, CanadaFreePress.com, and even to the point where, you know, I don't know, I don't know if I missed this or, um, I, you know, I, I just happened to see something on CFP, Canada Free Press, and I gotta find this here because I read it, and I thought, wow, I mean, it, it, it just, it really hit home with me. Um, uh, it, it was uh, it was probably one of the the best. Pe- I mean, uh, look, Judy McLeod, Brian Kiko, they all do like tremendous work at Canada Free Press. But let me let me see if I can find this. Um, there there was an article written here. Sure, I say that I'm unprepared now. Uh, there there was an article written that really it just it was like holy cow, this is like right on the money. Um, Hang on a minute. Hold on. Okay, it, it was by Sherzeev Obama. Give me dictatorial powers, or I'll take your country out. Wait, was that Morsi? Or was no, that Obama? Obama. Well, let's see. Uh, or, is, have we say, have we seen them in the same room together? <laughs> uh, look, I, I would urge everyone to go to CanadaFreePress dot com. That's CanadaFreePress dot com, and read that. Read that by Sherzeev. Obama, give me dictatorial powers, or I'll take your country out. He's already taken our. He's country already out. taken it up. But but you know, look, him and uh, what we're seeing, we're seeing the mask. The second term, we're seeing this mask come off, and Obama has finally begun to open this this uh, just just to rip open his take off the mask, and he is now showing himself as the dictator of the United States of America, the dictator that he is, this dictator-in-chief, Barack Hussein Obama. He laid out his plans to Congress. Uh, he, he's he, about the uh, ostensible fiscal cliff. That, that's what the article's about. But but you've got to read that because it it, it, it kind of got my brain working in a certain direction. And, and uh, yeah, not too many articles do that. I know what you mean. They was um, like, wait a minute, I, you know, I'm okay. I, I see what she's saying here, and and I know Sharers even she, she's a great great writer and great person, but but it's uh, the bottom line is uh, these are some of the most difficult days in the, con- the history of our country, and I know that the Civil War. I understand that, but you know what? We are as I spoke about initially about that storm that's coming, the storm that's coming. You know, did you ever wonder, okay, if you use that same analogy about the storm, if you think about it, we get all these warnings about hurricanes, the Superstorm Sandy, we get all those warnings. And now, okay, today, 
if the weather forecasters, if, if the media pundits were weather forecasters, all these media pundits are saying, well, the economy's improving, that we're in recovery, things are looking better, the stock market's up. If they were forecasters, I mean, if, if we could make that analogy, they're giving us a deliberately wrong forecast. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. If your joints are out there hurting because you can feel the, 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 the change in barometric pressure with your arthritis, I know, I know how that is. If you can look at the signs, you can look at the leaves, look at the, look at the things going on, look at the clouds in the distance. And you can see the storm is coming. I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you, while everyone's saying things are fine, why in the world are gun sales at their record highest in the history of this country? Why are the ammunition sales the highest in the history of this country? Because why? Obviously, the United States citizens, the terrorists, have to buy guns. I mean, the terrorists. That's what awesome. they consider us as. Um, there is a war on the Second Amendment. They are planning to implement a gun ban, gun control, regardless of congressional approval or other legislative approval. Obama told Sarah Brady that he is working under the radar. Under the radar is exactly what it is. And you talk to gun shop owners, and I've done this. I, every week I've, t I've been talking with, I've got a list of people I talk to every week, and this is my barometer for things. To, uh, to, yes, today. It was, days run together, i got to tell you. Today, I called the, a, a gun shop owner, and we, we've become kind of pretty good friends. He knows what I do. He knows what I do. He, he knows. And I said, well, well what's, what's the word? You know, He said, man, can't keep... Cannot keep AR-15s in stock. And by the way, three years ago, you could buy an AR-15 for about $300, $400 or less than you can today. Ammunition, back-ordered. License, gun licenses, concealed weapons permit, rising every single day. And yet you've got people telling you, don't worry, everything's fine. Now tell me how that comports. Tell me wh what's going on here, folks. Tell me. We know what's going on. Now, listen, I sure do know what's going on also. Yeah, well, they uh, are. Yeah, it's, it, it, but see, what's going to, and, and here's the problem. The people who are looking at these reports on the news, and, and, and ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, I had a great, con just a fantastic conversation with my wife the other day. And, and, and she's not one, she's not one at all to uh, listen to me. Uh, you know, guys, look, you know, you're married, you know, and you, you, you know, you, you, you and your wife maybe might not be on the same page. And if you are on the same page, God bless you. But sometimes you, you know where that disconnect is. I'm not talking about, you know, well, no, people totally are at all saying you're nuts. But. Different forms of growth and, and awareness. And, um, right. and you can see the, the subtle changes and, when the breakthroughs start happening, when the uh, epiphanies start happening, when you have what conversations that you, you were just referencing, well, it is, uh, it, yeah. it fills your spirit. It, it gets your hopes up. Like, well, you know, um, but I, was, I was talking to her, I just want to say this, I was talking to her about going to the grocery store. And, and you know, we're not, look, we're like, uh, I mean, if you're like us, and you're, I mean, our food supply is, you, you, how we prepare, you, you buy a couple of extra cans or whatever that you'd normally eat and you put it away. And we've been doing that for a while. It's not, we, you know, we don't have freeze-dried food for a year. We don't have emergency packs. You know, we talk about it. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about getting that. It would be great to, to do that. But that's what we were building. But, some. but you do it methodically as, as the budget permits. Right. Okay. Um, but but the, we were, we're talking and... and and I said, look, there's going to come a time when you're not going to be able to get this food. You're, you're not going to have the, the trucks going to the grocery stores who, that have the three-day supply of food. And she said, nah. you know, I, so she asked, she said, let's talk about this because 
you know, she doesn't really uh, regularly listen to, to, to the program. She does listen, but not regularly, not all the time. She does not know the ins and outs. She, she relies on me to do that. I mean, it's not that she discounts this, but, but when we were talking, she said, hey, you know, I think I'm seeing the signs of the food um, the uh, the food price is going up. I'm, I, I, I said that improperly, folks. I mean, uh, she, she was getting it in terms of uh, looking at the food prices because we coupon shop and we look for sales. So, but she's noticing that that the dollar, of course, and, and she has been noticing this, but it's really kind of hitting home of late. The dollar doesn't go very far anymore. Yeah, and. Things are just kind of screwed up with with uh, with the with the food, the cost, and and, and sometimes even the uh, just certain little subtle things going on out there. And, and she said, "Man, I think uh, you know something's changed in the last couple of months. Something has changed. That that spiritual shift we we've talked about, and referenced that of other people mentioning. Yeah, uh, yeah. people do feel it, and." Um, one thing I want to add, when we were talking about the history, the last hundred years of gun control uh, from different na- nations, the, the people, the Armenian people were slaughtered, the people in Soviet Union, China, Germany, uh, Guatemala, the, the one element was the confiscation of guns. That's right. But there was a second element, and that was starvation. You know, that's. I'm glad you brought that up because... Steve Quayle and I, and, and, and in fact, you were in on this conversation too. We were talking about the the, the bloodbath that would ensue if uh, if there was this uh, United Nations slash U.S. Yeah. gun grab. Some people, I mean, people will kill another person when starving to eat. But and, but but see, but they'll also turn in their weapons to get food. Right, and that's. You know, it, if, if, if think about this: if if an economic collapse or when the economic collapse happens, and if you don't have food in your pantry, but you've got a gun in your closet, and the government says we'll trade you food for your gun, and you've got kids crying, kids crying because they're hungry. They're hungry. They've never been hungry. In the West, in the United States, right. we have not seen hunger. Don't know a day of uh, th- uh, a day without. Right, but but you can't take the crying anymore because you know that they're hungry and you're hungry, and the cat's looking at you and the cat's scared because <laughs> you're looking at the cat saying, "Hey, <laughs> you know, um, just not for Chinese to take out anymore." But sorry. My apologies to all the Chinese uh, listening. Uh, I, I I don't mean that, but you understand mm-hmm. they're going to starve you. That w- when the money system goes down and there's no food to be had, they're going to say we've got the answer. The government has the answer, and you might think, well, that's baloney, Doug, because they couldn't even do it with FEMA. But they have all the answers for everything they're implementing now. That's right, because this is different. And, this and, is different. And they have the answers. And look at their solutions. Look at the aftermath of Sandy and the disaster, the role FEMA played in it, which was a disaster, just as it was in Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> their solutions, uh, the solutions are, in their mind, are nightmares to us. Their solutions benefit their uh goals and their goals are those follow they're following um the script of satan that's right to carry out this agenda and um this uh, i want to refer i want to this book new there's two books here i want to reference um pawns of the game written by william guy carr um it exposes how every major war over the past 250 years has been deliberately caused and profited from by the money lenders. Um, in this book, he goes on to talk about the planned um, revolution, uh, plotting the English and French revolutions, and how the international financiers obtained control of the American economy. Um, in this book, it goes on to say, the family unit, the right to own private property, the national borders, the right to believe in a creator, God, 
These beliefs will all be destroyed because the world must receive a world government supported by the planners inside the secret societies and the new religious groups. So the ultimate purpose of all this attack on nationalism is to tear down the borders so that they can be replaced by a one world government. And, and that's it. That's it. And, it, it. and you go further, their one world government, what do they want? They want to maintain population under 500 million. They want. That's it. Yeah. yeah and, 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 you know, and let, let me address that for, for a moment. And, and this is what I could not wrap my head around as an investigator, as somebody, a linear thinker. And kind of like the, the the opposite of Steve Quayle, where he can think three dimensionally in in five directions at once, and you know it, it's. Uh, but but I, I'm I'm a kind of guy that's or kind of a simple minded guy, where you know sometimes uh, sometimes you might have to if you're writing me a note, you know you might have to write it in crayon so I can understand it. But but seriously, I'm kind of a linear thinker when it comes to this. The What's behind this new world order? Everyone talks about it, but what's behind it? Who are these people behind it? And, and what, what is all of this? I mean, for the, for, the, for the normal Joe Smith or Susan Smith that goes to work every day and they got kids and they soccer and you know everything that we do, Go to the store, grocery shop, run, have normal lives, turn on the game on the weekend, that kind of stuff. New World Order, what are you talking about? Well, who's behind this? And, you, and Joe, you mentioned this population control. Well, why in the world would one? Would, I mean, what's all the. Well, you know, if you go back and go back and go back and go back and go back, here's, what, here's the one thing that really caught my attention and then I'm just going to I'm I'm off on a tangent here and you're doing but, great but it's, I think it's an important one <clears throat> it kind of when it, when I when I was in in school and you know you're looking at the bible you look at the genesis and you look at uh you look at this lineage it's like a family tree in in the scripture where so and so begat it's begat 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 all this right down the line right and, and I'm thinking, you think when you read this, well, so what? Okay, I mean, really, when you see it, so uh, okay, it's a listing of generations. Well, the key to understanding, at least in my view, from a simple-minded view, the key to understanding what this new world order, one world government, Illuminati whatever, you know, all this, the key understanding of this is this. You look at the, the, you look at the lineage in the Bible, all the way down through Jesus. That establishes a bloodline. And there are people out there in the world today, whether you believe this or not, it doesn't matter because no one cares, frankly, what you or I believe. No one gives a wit about what you or I believe. It's what they believe. These special people. <laughs> it's about their bloodline. Mm -hmm. To establish the fact that their descendants, if you can wrap your head around this, they're descendants of Jesus Christ. Now, mm -hmm. how, how, can, how can that be possible? Because Jesus didn't have any children. And I think there is an excellent quote in the Bible that explains uh, how people can so easily uh, be removed from the simplicity of Christ. They are um, so seeking this knowledge not to better themselves in a spiritual way. They're seeking this knowledge, all this extra knowledge and knowledge of the past, secret and hidden knowledge, to gain power, to control everybody. There, see, yeah, I, I understand been, that. They're under a strong delusion but, delivered by God, I believe, as it states in the Bible, that, uh, they're, and it's very strong. I mean, they really be believe this. And I wasn't sure about this. And then uh, the, your guy that we talked to, and I asked questions about him, yes. about it. I mean, these people believe that when they s slaughter us, that they get energy from it. 
they they need this and they need to slaughter us because they need the energy for the next conflict they face. This is what they think. Well, right, but even see again from the simplest, most basic, most banal, the the the, the most the bottom line point of view when we talk about the new world order, we talk about the the illuminated ones, the Illuminati, and people think, oh, you guys are nuts, you're crazy, there's no such a thing, and even if there was, these people are just, it's, they're just bananas, they're just, no, they're people with money and power and influence. Yeah, like David Rockefeller, who once said we were on the verge of a global transformation, all we need is the right major crisis, and the nation will accept the new world order. But see, but that's, but, imagine. But what's at the base of this, what's at the root of this? The root of this is being able to look at that that the all that family tree in the Bible that Scripture says, and then the people like the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and the Wahlbergs and the 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 people whose names are etched in the in the in history. These people believe they're the bloodline mm-hmm. that's going to establish the, that, that are going to populate the earth and we the normal people we are the ones that will be the enslaved ones the ones that survive the calling of the population we're going to be the army ants for these people and they looked and, and this is where it kind of the light switch went on in my head well it's that lineage in scripture that establishes this bloodline and they believe that they are descendants of this bloodline and therefore entitled to but be the leaders and we're not part of that we're not part of that we're not illuminated we're not the illuminated ones they are so they are even though they've got the, the money they are buying the future they are ensuring their place in the future. Their their, their they, the future seed. They think they are going to have right, right. It's about what they see. That's they, the thing. It's about they what think, they think, not they, what we think. They think they believe in God, just the wrong one. Right, but they still believe in, in God, and they believe that their God, Lucifer, yes. is going to overthrow God at the Battle of Armageddon or when this happens. They. I mean, this is why they do what they do. This is the, the, the one of the delusions. Um, they feel that they will... Be, why else would they do this unless they thought they were going to be successful? Um, why would they go through all of this uh, secrecy, these uh, the tactics that they use that are... The collateral damage is endless. Um, why would they go through all this if they didn't truly believe it? Well... It's not just for show. No. I mean, you know, that's a pretty lengthy discussion, and that's, that's a, a, a whole discussion for another time. But, 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 the, but see, I guess the reason I mention that is, Joe, is, is just, a, and folks, it's just a, I mean, if you're simple like me, you just, you know, you, you got to ask yourself, well, what, I mean, if, if, I mean, I know me, if I had like a gazillion dollars, uh, I'd be out helping people and, and doing yeah. things, and I'd be a normal person. I think. I mean, I don't think it would change me, except that it would certainly take the heat off, right? You know, you'd, you'd, yeah. yeah. But but you're you're not planning on you're not planning um, uh, on cryogenically. You're not you're not going to lose your mind uh, and think that you can you can actually. Buy the future for your offspring, and when yeah. I say buy the future, I'm talking about ensuring and, and wiping out half the population and changing the, the geopolitical structure. But but this is what it's all about. Yet yeah, when you talk to, when you present this to uh, to so-called journalists or people that have this uh, this supposed understanding of of how the world works, they call you a fruitcake. Well, no, no, it's real. It's, yeah, it's a real thing going on. And, and I want to read this quote from David Spangler. He was uh, a former cabinet member of the United Nations. He was the head of the planetary division. He said this, No one will enter the New World Order unless he or she will make a pledge to worship Lucifer. No one will enter the New Age unless he will take a Luciferian initiation. 
Okay. Uh, that's one out of maybe three UN quotes I found uh, a year ago or so. Um, yeah, sign and, me up for that. But, Go but, ahead. And, and, and <laughs> to the people who deny it, you know, um, what these people are blatantly, I mean, they're saying what they're going to do. We have David Rockefeller thanking uh, he, he says this, today America would be outraged if UN troops entered Los Angeles to restore order. Tomorrow they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there was an outside threat from beyond, whether real or uh, created, that threatened their way of existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead for us, for us to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of well-being granted to them by the world government. See, <clears throat> but that's, that's very relevant. Conspiracy theory. Well, and I, did, I didn't plan on going here, but let me just, uh, because I think that this is important, this is timely, and I'm not sure where you might hear this elsewhere, folks, but, but think about this. Right now, we are in a time period where everyone's looking and saying, you know, man, things are, are kind of shaping up toward, uh, are these the end days? Well, <clears throat> the, I mean, the, and to the point where people argue are, if we're in the tribulation versus the birth pains, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they're not arguing about if we're in the end times. They're arguing about which part of the end times we're in. Right. Well, think about this. You know that the United Nations just voted about uh, Palestinian statehood in the Middle East, right? You know about that this week. About the Palestinian what? Statehood. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we talked about that. And Morsi said that uh, Jerusalem will be their new eternal capital. Okay. All right. Now, the Jews have this in order to reestablish, and I'm not going to get too heavy into this, I'm just going to kind of give you the Cliff Notes version, and, and if you want to, we can do a show on this, or you can research this yourself, uh, yourselves. But one of the one of the issues for the um, end times is the construction of the Third Temple. Yeah, you're familiar with that, right, Joe? I mean, Absolutely. Okay. Now, some people argue that the, uh, the temple is us, our, the bodies, our bodies. Some people say it is the actual Solomon's temple. Okay. Uh, the temple now. If you, if you, and right in that uh, documentary, the Daniel Project, they talk about an organization who has all the materials, the whole, all the decorations, the things that were. Uh, to be in the temple, everything is acquired. The building materials, right? And and, I'll, and, the, 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 and the, that's exactly what I want to mention right now, because one of the prerequisites for the building of the third temple, folks, have you heard about this? There must be a red heifer born, a red heifer, a red cow born, and, and the the red heifer has got to be spotless. It's got to be pure red. Can't have any hairs of silver, hairs of any other color. It's got to be pure red. And over the years, I think five have been born. I think in the last 2,500 years, I, I, I'm not sure. I think maybe five, half a dozen at the most. But as they mature, they've got to reach three years of age. The red heifer's got to be three years of age and inspected before it can be declared a red heifer. To date, there has been no red heifer that has been deemed uh, pure to date. March 2010, there was a red heifer born in Israel, a she, a she cow, a female cow. <laughs> Sorry about that, a female cow. March 2010. As of as, as as I'm talking to you right now, there's not one discolored hair, not one mark, not one imperfection 
on that red heifer. There's not one spot on this virgin heifer. So March 2013, in what, four or three months from now, if that heifer achieves adulthood or achieves the three years, and there's no spots, no imperfections, they are clear to build the third temple. And that's just one event that we're seeing take place right now. And, and, and there's references to this in Jeremiah, and, and folks, you can, uh, you, you can, you certainly you can research the red heifer in the third temple and find find out. But 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 this is how close we are. This is how close we are right now. And there's it has to do with the bloodline. It has to do with the bloodline. We need Doc Marquis back on. He knows more about the bloodline than I know about myself. Uh, the bloodlines. But and yeah, but you know, one other I mean, thing. I understand it. The pre- preservation of the bloodline, keeping right. it pure. Right. Um, I understand their uh, thoughts of being the true descendants or whatever. Um, what I. Do- don't understand if they really believe they're true descendants of uh, what do they believe the bloodline of Jesus, the bloodline of, of uh, Adam or Cain or what? Well, uh, and, and because this, this, gets, is, this gets into right. some really heavy duty stuff. This but, is what's important, though. right? There's a bloodline of Cain, and then there's a bloodline of Abel, and, and but but uh, yeah, I mean, there's more than that, and it's it's. It's well beyond the discussion that I could really get into now. But, but, but my question is, if these people really believe that they're descendants of the, in the bloodline of Jesus Christ, wouldn't they want and strive to uh, portray that and do what he uh, promote his beliefs, his laws? Why would uh, so-called people um, like that? Go to the other side, the, the opposite side, and well, uh, denounce not only denounce but destroy. Try trying to destroy in the minds of men, the, the souls of men. Well, it, it, it's a corrupted. It, see, the, the whole theory is corrupted. And really, again, to get into that, you start getting into some really heavy duty things that that ex- extend well beyond what what certainly I'm prepared to even discuss. But. Um, uh, but it, it's you would think okay you would think that the normal everyday mentality you would think but, but see we're not thinking like we're not process programmed to think that way almost so we've got to actually kind of go outside our our, our normal thought processes to, to think like they do and this gets into just, just folks by the way this gets into um, in, in in the Bible, Jacob, uh, who's, who bore a son, Judah, daughter-in-law, Tamar, Tamar conceived twins. And uh, it, back in the day, and Genesis chapter 38 uh, talks about this, but back in the day, uh, during that time period, when, uh, when a baby was born, to mark the firstborn uh, out of the womb, the midwife, would take a red string and tie the string to the wrist of the firstborn child to identify that first person as firstborn. And <laughs> the uh, in the case of uh, Tamar, uh, she had twins and Zura and Faraz, Faraz, Zura and Faraz. Faraz means to push aside, by the way. Zero was the uh, first one out of the womb. The arm stuck out. And, uh, uh, you know what? I think I got that backwards. But uh, uh, or, I'm sorry, Ferez, or yeah, uh, uh, Zara was the first one out, and they tied a red string around the around his wrist. And uh, but Ferez ended up kind of pushing Zara aside and came out first. And 
but it, 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 again, it goes to the bloodline. It goes, but the symbolism behind that, the red string around the wrist and the, the color red of spilled blood and, uh, you know, the, think about that in terms of the royal bloodline and think, think about uh, the celebrities you see wearing this, the red string around their wrist. And I mean, you can see it in different people from Madonna to, you know, uh, to, to study for, the Kabbalah yeah, and stuff. It's, it's like a fraternity. It's right. Like the Brotherhood. Michael Jackson had it. Paris and uh, 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 what's her face? Hilton, uh, Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow, all these people, Mariah Carey, Mick Jagger, and so on and so forth. You see, where and even more importantly, the royal family. The royal family, and think about that because remember earlier in the week we were talking about the Olympics. Remember earlier in the week we were talking about the royal family of Great Britain. We talked about the Olympics. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You did an excellent talk on the Olympics yesterday. But see, think about that against the backdrop of biblical scripture and the bloodlines. And this, I'm just throwing out like dots, throwing out pieces to kind of prep as like some prep. Because at some point in time, we're going to go through this and you'll understand, I believe you'll understand why we are seeing things happen today. That's based in scripture. That's based in in satanic ritual, and it's it would be it's one thing for us to talk, say you know the Olympics it was a it was satanic in nature it was a display of Satanism. Well, why? Well, why? Well, see, this, some of the stuff I just talked about gave you just little bits and pieces, just to kind of keep in the back of your mind. Because one of these days, we'll talk about what it really means. The third temple, the red heifer, the bloodlines, it'll all come together. And you'll see answers. You'll have answers as to why things are currently happening, why they're taking place the way they are today. Mm -hmm. And why these people think like they do. And just to give you uh, a little insight here, I'm on Wikipedia, probably uh, the most accurate source in the history of the world no <laughs> they have a page new world order the new world order conspiracy theory an article about the use of the term new world order and conspiracy theory they uh say that conspiracy theorists or they say there are numerous systematic conspiracy theories throughout which the concept of a new world order is viewed and they go on to a list they say there are end time conspiracy theorists uh, people who believe that the Bible, pro the prophecies in the book of Revelations will be fulfilled. Um, and it gets into the false prophet, the the person, the Antichrist. Um, and it gets into Freemasonry, the Illuminati, the protocols of the elders of Zion, ra the round table, the open conspiracy, the new age, the fourth Reich, alien invasion, brave new world. But what they do here um, is marginalized I mean mass surveillance is one they say conspiracy theorists concerned with surveillance abuse believe that the new world order is being implemented by the cult of intelligence at the core of the surveillance industrial complex through mass surveillance and the use of social security numbers the barcoding of retail goods and the universal product code markings and uh, most recently RFID tags uh, they're claiming that these corporations and governments are planning to track every move of consumers and citizens. And they're writing this as if it's not, I mean, that's word for word exactly what's happening. But see, I mean, uh, uh, look, Wikipedia is something where... It, it, right. It, and Anybody I just, can I, write up right, stuff you, for Wikipedia. Yeah, you edit. I, I remember in 2004, I think it was, I was on Wikipedia, there was a somebody had created a page about me on Wikipedia. I didn't do it. In fact, I, back then I didn't, I mean, I, today I wouldn't know how to create a Wikipedia entry, but, and I, I looked at it. So somebody sent me this email about it. And so I looked at it and everything was wrong. They did yeah. not, it, in fact, they had to take it down. Well, they actually, what happened was, um, they, I mean, they had my date of birth wrong. They had my, uh, uh, city of, of residence wrong. They had like a, a whole bunch of stuff wrong. I mean, information that could have been very 
easily verified. But and I was surprised. I mean, why in the world would somebody want to create a page about me? Really, seriously. But, but here's the thing. I, I uh, oh, uh, at that time there was another gentleman that was was working with us, and he uh, re-edited the page. I guess you've got to belong to do it, or you know, I don't know why, how you do it, but. And then somebody from the UK changed that. So he went back in and changed it again. And I, I guess there was this issue where uh, if, if something is in dispute, it goes to a different lower, it gets taken off. But, but the bottom line was, was at the end, I just told the, I just said, look, I don't, just take it down. Please stop it or uh, I, whatever you had to do to write at that time to, to get it taken off. I said, I don't, don't want to be, you know, but get me off there. And, and they, they did. But, there, but the accuracy it was so. I mean, it was so inaccurate. So people are turning to things like this, like Wikipedia. Yeah, they say. Uh, really? Yeah, they say in here. Skeptics of the new world order conspiracy theories accuse its proponents of indulging in the uh, fruitive fallacy, a belief that significant facts of history are necessarily sinister. Conspiria- conspiracism. A world view that centrally places conspiracy theories. I'm not even sure that's a word. In the okay. unfolding of history, rather than social and economic forces, and fusion paranoia, uh, promiscuous absorption of fears from any source whatsoever. Um, this guy writes a book in uh, or a paper. There are no conspiracies. And he talks about, he says, there are several problems with a conspiratorial view that don't fit with what we know about the power structures. First, it assumes that a small handful of wealthy and highly educated people somehow develop an extreme psychological desire for power that leads them to do things that don't fit with the roles they seem to have. For example, that rich capitalists are no longer out to make a profit but to create a one-world government, or that elected officials are trying to uh, consolidate and uh, consolidate power so they can assume dictatorial powers. These kinds of claims go back many decades now, and it's always said that it it is really going to happen this time, but never does. Since these claims have been proven wrong dozens of times by now, it makes more sense to assume that the leaders act for their usual reasons, such as profit-seeking motives. Um, of course, they want to make as much money as possible, and by being elected... Uh, by huge margins every time. But, and it says that can lead them to do many unsavory things, but nothing in the ballpark of creating a one world government or suspending the Constitution. <laughs> okay. And they go on to wow. this article, this Wikipedia article uh, goes on to say this that activities of conspiracy theorists, theorists talk radio shows, that's books, us. Websites, no, 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 that's not, no, yeah, that's documentaries, us. conferences, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, they say unwittingly draw enormous amounts of energy and effort from serious criticism and activism directed to a real and ongoing crime of state and their institutional background. That is why conspiracy-focused movements, the JFK assassination, 9/11, are treated far more tolerantly by centers of power than is norm for a serious and critical activist work of uh, work of truly left-wing progressives who are marginalized from the mainstream public discourse. But what they, I mean, if you're reading through this, they, uh, in the stupid Wikipedia article, take every uh, issue really surrounding the New World Order, the mechanisms of control, uh, the occult, as an example, the police state, the control of money, and say that, and, and they find excuses and spin to downplay, um, you know, the the one world government creators. Even though all these one, the people who are creating this write books about it, write papers about it, publish in journals and magazines, uh, consult with the highest people in, in our governments. Um, about how to create this new world order. The presidents say it, um, but, but it's still considered... Of, I mean, it, it bothers me that... But here's here's the, 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 the bottom line with this. 
I mean, the we're conspiracy. the ones with the proof. Okay. It's not a conspiracy. The conspiracy is what they are arguing, but, that there is but, no conspiracy. But there's a definite, but when we're talking about this, and ladies and gentlemen, this is so important, I believe, for everyone to understand. We, the United States, we're on the road to a full-blown communist tyranny dictatorship. Now, the, the, there's a difference between communism and the techniques of communism. And we must understand the difference because one of the techniques of communism, we must un understand that the, we must understand the conspiratorial nature of communism, or we're not going to understand communism itself. Under let me repeat that again. You've got to understand the difference between the techniques of communism and communism itself. This is where we're headed, this country right now. I mean, what's the difference? The difference. Well, I mean, what's the, if, what's if the you importance? Don't, okay, the conspiracy. Okay, the techniques of cons of communism. It is, or it, the the conspiratorial nature of communism breeds or allows communism to not only function but to evolve, and by that I mean this. The conspiracy behind communism. There are two things that are necessary for conspirators, and and, and just multiply this. In, in think about this in general. Conspirators have two things in common. Number one, they're accomplished liars, and number two, they're far-seeing planners. They're very patient and they're far-seeing. So when you look at the the conspiracy theory entry in trees in Wikipedia. You are dealing with accomplished liars, people that can twist and, 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 and reformat facts to cover the conspiratorial nature of communism. And once you understand that, then you can understand how communist communism can, can become, uh, uh, become a fair is, is so effective and, and could become a reality it's a tyranny planned by a power by power seekers where the most effective weapon is nothing but a big lie mm -hmm. that's what it is sacrificing our national sovereignty to a global government and the UN um, the people in control you, you, doing this exactly you know morality right. you're right it's an international conspiratorial drive communism it's an international conspiratorial drive for power by men in high places willing to use any means necessary to bring about their desired aims which are global which is global conquest and that's six billion people there you go right there you go right and um it's just amazing to me that, and somebody said this in the chat room, you know, this was talked about in the Bible that this would happen. Why, why are we all so surprised? Uh, I'm not surprised that it's happening. I'm surprised that at the level of people, at the amount of people who accept it, who defend it, the, the new world order, uh, even people uh, who claim to be, you know, freedom fighters like Sean Hannity and Bill O'Reilly and these jokers on TV who don't even have a thought for themselves except what's on their teleprompter. They don't address the issues. Right. The core issues. Right. I mean, and these people think they're going to be part of this system too. Uh, you know, these are, are, they are useless eaters or considered useless eaters by the same people that consider us useless eaters. Um, I, this is why I don't understand the news media you have um the major organizations okay if they were to tell the truth the whole truth and expose everything as they should can you imagine the changes that would i mean since we see so much the mainstream media can say anything and i don't uh, I, you know what I, I, most I don't, people will believe it and regurgitate it constantly imagine if they told the truth i don't see if they did tell if you had one person We'll say Sean Hannity come out, and and one day, you remember that movie Liar Liar, where the Jim Carrey couldn't lie for I don't know whatever yeah. it was. Okay, but if Sean Hannity, for I'm just using him as an example, came out and said, 
folks, this is what's really going on. And then he just went down the litany of things that was that are going on. You would not have – that probably would be one of the lowest rated programs. I, I, I think you would probably – or, or maybe one of the highest rated because the people would be mocking him and saying that he finally, he finally, uh, like hit his head and, uh, you know, he, he finally lost it because the truth in this case, the fact that the, the, the desired goal is for the elimination of all rights to private property. The fact that the, the there's a goal here, a, a, an organized agenda to dissolve the family unit and to tear to rend the fabric, the moral fabric of this country. That's a goal in the destruction of religion, mm -hmm. okay, which Marx called the opiate of the people, opiate of the masses. The fact that communists must work to establish socialism. It's bait to establish communism. That's what socialism is. Using the main uh, media outlets to right. shape the society into their way of thinking. They're still working within the perversion of the political spectrum. They can't get, they cannot see past. They can't even acknowledge when I say they, I, I don't care whether you're Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, Ed Schultz, uh, Rachel Maddow, uh, Chris Matthews. None of these people can talk to speak to the perversion of the political spectrum that exists. The fact that what was once, right of the center is now far left of the center. Well, if you don't support the new world order, you're racist. Well, it goes beyond that, of course. And I mean, the, you know, the, yes, it's but no wonder the media, you know, doesn't do its job. Uh, another quote here, I'll be, this will hopefully be the last one of the night from David Rockefeller. Um, remember this one where he thanked the media for their silence. He says it would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subjected to the lights and publicity during those years. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. That's what he said in thanking the major media for keeping their secrets of a prophetic one world government secret and not exposing it to the public. So he publicly thanks them the, the mainstream news for hiding and keeping secret their plans to take over the world. But at the same time, and, and this speaks to, uh, a, as an example, you could show this to, you know, a hundred people who don't believe there's a conspiracy going on. You could show all these, all the evidence. If they're not convinced now, what would it take? I mean, what more can we do? What angles can we use what weaknesses is there in their game plan that we can exploit to help persuade people not to think like we want them to think, but to help them think for themselves so they can draw their own conclusions. That's what we need to yeah. figure out. Right. And I agree with that. And I want to thank Lucy. I know we're up against the break. I want to thank Lucy for sending this to me. This is kind of plays right into what we're talking about. You get these, you get these socialists, you get these communist revolutionaries, people like Van Jones. Folks, you hear about this? Wednesday, he spoke at the 16th annual Mario Savio Memorial Lecture on the campus of the University of California, Berkeley, last, uh, yeah, it was on Wednesday. Van Jones called Republicans and those who oppose the president Anyone who opposes Obama, the Messiah, Whoa. treasonous. He says this? No, he just, I, I said Messiah. But he, Anyone he, who opposes Obama? Anybody, he said this. Anyone who oppose, opposes the president are treasonous. And he created this, uh, this allegory in, in the speech where they wish to let people die on the beach. I don't have the, the, the audio clip, but he said, let the bodies pile up on the beach. Let the pain accumulate, because our view is this. If enough dead bodies pile up on this beach, they're going to fire the lifeguard, and we can get the lifeguard's job. What a sick SOB Van Jones is. On a lighter note, 
that makes no sense because the uh, lifeguard's job duties don't entail picking dead bodies up off the beach. That would be the medical examiner. Oh, well, okay. And they I just fire. The, yeah, I know. They could fire the lifeguard and get the lifeguard's job. It's and this was an Obama czar. He was an old. He's that's my right. House. That's right. Along with all the other czars that we no longer hear from, John Holder and who admitted. I mean, for people who don't believe in chemtrails, go look up John Holdren's publications on geoengineering and how it's been in effect for a long time, and their plans to increase and continue it. Um, you know, the, the, the deception is humongous. And what do you say about the lie or the old saying, the bigger the lie, the more that we'll believe or. Yeah. Yes. People will look, the bigger the lie, the easier it will be for people to believe. I I know uh, Joseph Goebbels had said that, that, or I'm paraphrasing of course, but uh, Hitler during that, uh, during that time period, of course. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's easy to fool people yeah. and the lie is bigger. The bigger the lie, the easier people fall for it. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing one big lie being thrust upon Americans and upon the world, one big lie. Yeah, one big lie indeed. Folks, and, we're, we're up. Well, I'm sorry, Joe. We're up against the top of the hour. we got to be, be uh, careful with these breaks. Yeah, we're going to break now. Give us a call. We'll take... We're taking calls the whole next hour at 661-244-9839. Call in now. We'll take your calls and more on the other side. You're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report. It's Friday, December 7th, 2012. Survival of the fittest. In any and all situations, survival is your number one priority. That requires being tough and thinking smart. And the folks at Freeze Dry Guy are going to help you do just that. They have a long-range patrol ration entrees, what they call the Brick Pack. When you're in survival mode, it is absolutely the best item for your survival pack or bug out bag. You can go farther, faster, and carry more food with the LRP cold weather ration entrees. Not only do these long-lasting, durable entrees help sustain you or your family through the harshest environment or situation, they are by far the most delicious of their kind. No contest. With a variety of tasty entrees, you can't beat the LRP Brick Packs. Let Freeze Dry Guy help you in your survival situations. Go to freezedryguy.com. That's freezedryguy.com. Or call 866-404-3663. That's 866-404-FOOD. If you are stumped, you don't know what kind of gift to give to a friend or a loved one, I'm telling you, you must go to 4physics.com. That's the numeral 4, P-H-Y-S-I-C-S dot com. This is your one-stop shopping palace. That's the only way I can put it. I could spend easily an hour on this website. Innovative, fun, educational. There are games, books, weather instruments, unique time-telling devices, jewelry, optical devices, laboratory equipment. Let me give you an example. We all know we can tell time. With a sundial, you've seen those advertised. Did you know that you could tell time by the stars? At 4physics.com, you can buy a horologium nocturnum. This was a navigational device used in the 15th century by navigators at night to tell time by the stars. It's beautifully crafted in the shape of a pendant made of bronze and pewter or gold and silver. Absolutely a stunning gift. I would be proud to give it to anyone. You must go to 4physics.com, even if you're not stumped. That's four physics. That's the numeral four, P-H-Y-S-I-C-S dot com. It's your one-stop shopping palace. Any problems that you have, I don't know what to get grandpa. I don't know what to get my loved one. That's unique. You will find it at four physics dot com. Please take my word for it. Go to the website, but give yourself a lot of time because you're not going to want to leave. For physics.com. 
You better wake up fast and listen to this, America. The Obama campaign has launched attack squads disguised as truth teams dedicated to intimidating and silencing all political dissent carried over the Internet that criticizes the Marxist Obama. Truth Squad specifically focused on covering up Obama's endless trail of lies, corruption, and subversion, and using the Gestapo power of our own government to police and censor the Internet and shut down websites that dare to carry the real truth about Obama's Marxist coup. Remember the names of these Gestapo-style agencies that work right there in your neighborhood. KeepingHisWord.com, KeepingGOPHonest.com, and AttackWatch.com. KGB, SS, and Gestapo-style police state gangster organizations at work to silence the important voices of patriot dissent, some of which have already been shut down by Obama's orders. Adolf Hitler would have been proud. We're the 21st Century Tea Party Patriots. Doug Hackman, one guy that doesn't need a bullhorn to get your attention. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to hour number three, our third and final hour of this December 7th, Friday, 2012, uh, our last show of the week as we move quicker and closer to Christmas. Yeah, um, how many days to Christmas? Let's I'm count not down. Counting, but it Let's is coming down. and will be gone before we know it. Uh, a holiday that is um, days, supposed folks. to be <clears throat> uh, for celebrating the birth of the of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And um, one thing I, I said and mentioned in the chat room yesterday is we should celebrate his birth every day because the, his sole purpose for being on this planet was for our salvation, doing the will of his Father so that all have the opportunity to be saved. And My amen. that deserves amen. celebration every day. You, you know, it, and... We have to look at the gift of, of, of life. I mean, we, we were given the gift of salvation by by, by his his coming, and, and uh, I yeah. mean, imagine just just imagine. I, it, it's difficult to, to to really imagine the 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 love behind that gift of salvation. It, it really is, and, and really, folks, we can't talk about current events. Oh, I suppose we could. But we really can't talk about current events. We can't talk about Damascus. We can't talk about Syria. We can't talk about Libya. We can't really talk about our economy or our, our lack of morality in this country without acknowledging God, Jesus, the Bible. Mm -hmm. We can't. Well, we can, but well, we, we, we wouldn't we, be telling the truth, right? Because because it it, it, it all it, it all connects and and see. To me, when I realized that, well, when it all came together for me, it, 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 things became clearer. And uh, I don't know. The only thing I can say is this: I, I, I feel so blessed by by the presence of all of you listening live, and, and of course the listeners uh, throughout the world, and, and the listeners in the uh, uh, on the uh, MP3. Even the uh, federal listeners, who, and, yeah, even those, and, and uh, hopefully you'll, hopefully you'll uh, open a Bible and be saved. Yeah, because what do we have uh, in this life? What what do we take from this life to the net when we die? We take our soul, and that is all. Any material goods we have gained on this earth, or not gained mean nothing. Uh, no, the only nothing. thing we take with us are what we have done in the spiritual realm, which we we cannot sell our souls. We can't sell our souls for stuff. We can't sell <laughs> our souls for 
It is positions. We you can't sell our souls for. I mean, we you can't sell our souls. It reminds me of. Uh, uh, after I say this, we'll go right to the funds. It reminds me of people who are um, on drugs and they they sell their belongings at you know a quarter of the price, their Xboxes or whatever, uh, so they can get their fix. Um, these people are, are selling their eternity for a little bit of power and money and, and some kind of what stature they perceive they have some stature or are better than others. Um, but that goes into the, the bloodline, the, <laughs> the, uh, Oh, that mentality of buying the future. That, 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 see, that's the thing of buying the future. And we need to pray as much as we, and I say we, because I know if you guys are like me, you despise these people. Um, but we need to pray for their salvation because we're not, God did not tell us to select who to pray for or who to try to help. Uh, we are to treat all as we want to be treated. We are to pray for all. And we are not to judge salvation. That is not our, our job. But um, as I don't think this nation will ever go back, we're done as a nation. Um, yeah, we I'm, still I, can I think continue have. to pray for our oppressors. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Well, maybe there's a, there could be a change of heart. Maybe there could be a change if enough people pray. And, and we have to re- see, to me too, we, we've got to repent, pray. Pray for the spirit of, of the very people that that are oppressing us, as you say, and perhaps there could be a change of spirit, change of heart. And then if there's enough change of heart, maybe we can turn this around. But in the meantime, prepare, 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 because we can't we can't turn. I mean, we, we have to prepare ourselves spiritually, but we also have to prepare practically. But yeah. Now we're gonna go to phone. Two hours. I went by. Sorry about that. Go ahead. We're gonna go to Tim. Uh, Tim, you're on live with the Hagman and Hagman Report. What's on your mind tonight? You're up, sir. Yeah, that's you. Did I get the name right, Tim? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay. How you guys doing? Very well. What's on your mind? I know. Uh, yeah, it's a great, great show tonight. Um, you know, thinking about it all, we have to remember what our Lord said. His kingdom isn't of this world. And we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and our testimony, but the beast overcomes the saints. We know we lose in this life. We have to realize that in the end. I want to hold back evil as much as anybody else does. And I'm sure all the listeners do, too. We hope to have a peaceful life. But, you know, as us as believers, we don't bring peace on this earth. We bring judgment. The world wants that peace, that false peace they hope for. But that's not the peace we hope for. I think that's a large part of why they hate us. And you're right. Coming to the realization that um, <laughs> we can't fix this. This is part of God's plan. It is a, it's a hard thing to accept at first um, because we want to fix it. Yeah, we want to no, make it better. That's right. That's right, Joe. You know, the thing is, I think about lumping in the falling away with the time of the Gentiles being fulfilled. All the Gentile nations are in economic upheaval that's the beginning of them is this their time is up and then it goes back to israel i don't know it's just a thought because you know the falling away we see our political leaders our government i mean they they're doing things that god doesn't approve of their laws and you know when you think about all that it's all lumped in with that and i'll lump in a lot of the churches with that as well I mean, you go, I've visited many of these churches. I have went to a church for a good 11 years. And you know what? Towards the end of it, I realized, hey, guys, we have to desire the Holy Spirit. I stood up in front of these people and said, how many of you want to be filled with the Spirit? And not one of them came forward. Now, I was, I guess I would say, I told myself I'm going to do that as a slight experiment. I'm not saying I was necessarily led to do that, but I felt I needed to say that to see where their hearts were. I'm telling you, brothers, the hearts aren't there. Even in these buildings, we got the dead preaching to the dead. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it sounds dismal. It's it's kind of it's it's sad in in a, in a way, but the whole world is dying. It's not only that; it's inside these built man. There's believers in every denomination. There's no doubt about that. I know you agree with that as well. But Absolutely. after I've, you know, when, uh, sorry about that. When I went no. around to these places, and I and, and I've seen what is happening, it's it's not good. Well, we, you know, everyone listening to this broadcast, you, you, caller, you, others, we are key people, not because we're special, but because we have that desire, we have that that spirit, we have that yearning uh, to, to do God's work, to do. Uh, to do the work of Jesus, to, to we have that desire, and as long as we've got that, you're a key person. You can change by word or by deed. You can change the hearts, the minds of others, and perhaps you might just change one person's it, mind and heart. It's not even changing; it, it's or it's planting the seed right, that right. the Lord uses. To, to manifest in, into that change. So what you did might not, you know, when you stood up, maybe that maybe that had no immediate effect. But that, as Joe said, that seed might have been planted, and who knows what might have come from that today, where you know maybe one person thought about that. And well, that's true. You know, the thing is, when I read the letters to the Corinthians, I look when Paul said, desire spiritual gifts, and then he lists all the people. He says, when you, um, so, someone has a revelation, someone has a song, someone has a, a doctrine, someone has a word of knowledge, revelation, whatever. You had a list of things, but you don't, I'm looking for a Holy Ghost church. I'm telling you, you can't find it. Yeah. No, I know. one or two, and that. You know, you just find one or two, but it, you know what? I, I look at this, and, you know, Satan has his own history he's written. And I'm telling you what, a lot of people have fallen into that. And I'm going to lump the churches in that, because I think traditionally through the history, from when the Bible was put, first put together, through Constantine, all the Catholics, then when the Protestants showed up, King James put his Bible together. And I tell you what, you can examine this and study this. You might have to dig deep, but there's that word office that King James had put in there isn't the correct word. There isn't an office. The authority is the Holy Spirit. Jesus told the Twelve, he said, don't exercise authority over one another like the Gentiles do. We're not supposed to operate like that because everyone has a part. You have a part. I have a part. But you know what? People don't realize that they actually have a part. Yeah. That's and so that dead on, right? Spirit, authority. But, but but you know, no no. But but you're but you're so right. We have a part to play, and and like we we're saying before, like I was talking this week, if everyone, regardless of what the situation is, what your station in life is, if everyone just plays their zone, plays their part, plays their position. And, and and we do so, uh, you know, in the spirit of, of God. I, I We can put up a very formidable uh, uh, resistance to what's coming and at the same time be part of, you know, uh, uh, fulfill and, uh, fulfill or uh, capture uh, the, the, the spirit uh, of God and the grace of God. I'm not sure I said that right, but you, you get where I'm going with this, I think. But yeah. Um, yeah. Well, when I think about the when I think about the positions of a pastor, I'm telling you, when Apostle Paul spoke this in Acts, he said the Holy Spirit chooses the overseers. Now the overseers are supposed to be there to make sure the people are moving in the Holy Spirit. Then if something comes forward, you discern whether that is truth, and then you disregard it or you accept it because Jesus. Because Paul said, through the Spirit, try the spirits, whether they're of God or not, because he had to do that. You know, don't yeah. be offended if you don't know it all, because I don't know it all. <laughs> no, no none of us know it all. Anybody, I'm, you don't see anybody wanting to operate like that. I'm telling you what, this radio show is more like how it should be. People have can bring in and feel the Spirit has led them to say like I'm talking right now. 
that's a blessing to be able to do that. And you can't operate unless you have a Sunday school class and this class and that class and this has to be done this way and that way. You have to come under the doctrines and it's 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 sad. It's just a, it's unbelievable. I want to try to find a group. We started our own tiny little group at my house. But you know what? I'm not the one operating it. I don't have the authority to do it. I want the Holy Spirit to lead and guide this whole thing like he wants to do. He wants to be invited. He wants to be welcomed. And I thank God you gave me an opportunity to talk to 40 nations right now. Absolutely. That's, that's what it's that's what it's all about. And, and you know, it, it's it's great that you've what you've done, what you started and you know and you realize your position that and and we realize too we're vessels. We're vessels. That that's what we are. And uh uh just keep on keeping on. Keep on doing that and and keep uh keep fighting the fight. Keep keep playing your position, and, and I guarantee you that. You know, it actually, go ahead. I mean, it almost becomes draining sometimes. I mean, it just. I don't try to make things happen myself because I don't have the authority. You know what? The Spirit's going to do in you you what He's going to do. That's what He does. You can't force Him to do anything, but you know what? You got to let Him take take over you got and how do you do that i'll tell you what i don't know because he does it <laughs> That's exactly he's spontaneously perfect he's spontaneously perfect you don't know what he's going to do and when he's going to do it i mean i've had the holy spirit i closed the prayer out one time at this church the pastor said then close the prayer out i closed the prayer out the holy spirit fell on me and i went into a um not tones but i went into a deep deep intercession Bam, it just the spirit stirred up in me, and I started moaning, groaning, uttering things that couldn't be, uh, you know, put into words. And you know, tears flowed like you wouldn't believe. I can't even duplicate it. Now, that doesn't happen all the time, but the spirit, there was a need, so he moves. But you know what? He moves on the ones who want him. Desire him. Desire him. People, please desire the Holy Spirit. Because I tell you what, you're not going to make it without him, and you can't make it without him. <laughs> it's impossible. The elect aren't deceived because they're filled with the Holy Spirit, and they can discern false from truth. Bless you guys, and have a great night, and I can't wait to continue to listen. I enjoy your show. God bless you guys. Bye-bye. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Yeah, God, God bless you, and thank it, you for it, the it, terrific call. Yeah, and, you know, and the caller made a point, uh, something that, um, he he said that you added on uh, if people would just do uh, or or take take on a task and do something instead of worrying about what other people can you know, are going to do about it or how other people are going to fix it if people would take the initiative to try to make change themselves it would be a much better place uh, just like if you know people would take the initiative to learn uh, of what's going on in the world. Uh, well, exactly. But, but at the same time, and I, you know what, I know there are people in this very position. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm about to speak to you, you listening to this program right now. I know I, there are people in this position where you're not where you want to be. Things aren't working out for you. Things are just rough. They're, they're bumpy. It's like uh, driving through a parking lot and Every five feet, there's a speed bump, and you're kicking the, the the file cabinet in your office. Believe me, I've got dents in my file cabinet because I understand. And and it's 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 like nothing's working. Nothing's working. Things are things aren't going the way they should be going. Well, think about this. Picture picture yourself as a drowning victim, or you're out in the middle of the the water and you're drowning the 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 tide the the under undertow is pulling you down and the lifeguard runs out and he swims out to get you and by your very nature by your very nature you're flailing your arms and you're smacking them and you know i mean you keep it up you're both going down but 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 i mean but just by your very nature man you're you're struggling for your life you're you're in a panic mode and you're flailing and splashing and, and sucking in water and spitting it back out and frantic the guy's there to help the lifeguard's there to help you and, and in a lot of ways to me that's that's what uh 
you know, once you stop flailing and turn your turn yourself over to the lifeguard, things go a lot smoother. You get saved, and and yeah. that's kind of like, you know, once you stop making plans that are antithetical, or you know, not in the God's not not in God's best interest. God's got a plan for you, and stop fighting it. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Stop fighting it. Right, and it is easier said than done. But uh, it is the, also the solution. It is the only solution for peace of mind, um, for total peace of mind, knowing knowing, he is with us. If That's we right. do what he asks, there is no greater gift. We're going to go right. back to the phone here. Uh, we're going to go to area code 304, then we're going to go to Jason. 304, you're live on the Hagner Hagner Report. Hey. Good evening. You're, you're, on, your you're on live. You're on live. Go ahead. Uh, all right. Hey, you guys had a great show tonight. Uh, Thank I you. Just, uh, uh, my. Uh, I was praying earlier, uh, and uh, I was singing and, and praying. That's what I do. I sing a lot, and I pray. And the Spirit of the Lord just came down on me so hard today. And I didn't know the reason why. Uh, There is so much going on in the world and so much going on within all of us, within each of us. And and then, you know, I I listened to Hawk earlier, and then I, I turned on you guys. And... And I turned off my TV a while back, and this is my only entertainment. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I sing and I play. Hey, hey I listen to no, you guys. no refunds, no refunds. Now we, you know. <laughs> mm, yeah, I, I, it, it's just that there's a spirit. I, I know it's God's God, what He's doing in people's lives, just like your last caller. And within you and within all of us, I mean, we are against great darkness, but there is great light within us. It's being poured out. It's being poured out within us. And I I just want you guys guys to know that you're part of that light and you're part of that uh, that spirit that's being poured out and you keep doing it well thank you well we're humbled by that for your vote of confidence Um, and I gotta give the glory and all the praise to the Lord because really like I said the other day we just show up Um, I I don't know how I know know, I heard that this has um grown so much our show has expanded so much it's not because we are paralyzing you know captivating charismatic people um it's definitely not because of our intelligence but there is something and <laughs> it's arguably because yeah. of my my good looks but you know other than that no I, <laughs> you know and, and no. that's it. It, it but but you know with all this with all this darkness that we face and sometimes it's it's almost like well what did you talk about tonight well it's it's that that come it's that sharing of the light of it's that it's that passing of of the lighting of the candle you know kind of thing going on and we can't hide that underneath a bushel we've got to share that and sometimes you just got to go where the spirit, yes. the spirit takes you yes. you know and um, yes. uh, so I mean we we went totally off script tonight but it's okay I mean I, I think it's okay it, it is and you're right about that you you you. And that's one thing the Lord uh, has spoken to me about, too, is you can't hide it. Right. Uh, my brother and I, we he, he's the pastor. We have a, a small church. But our, our whole thing is worship. You know, I play the drums and I sing with my, my brother and my mother. And I'm going to get you guys a tape of it or a CD here real soon. Uh but that's what we are meant to do, and uh, love to hear it. Yes, we just 
we 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 just do that and uh, and we take care of people uh, the best we can, you know, where we are, and um, that's what we're about. And uh, I don't want to be anyplace else. If I if I had won the lottery, the, the last big lottery, I would still be here. I'd still be here singing every Sunday. Great. With my brother and my mother. Great. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like you guys. If you had all yeah. the money in the world, wouldn't you still be doing what you do? Same time, same place. Yeah, m- m- maybe. Yeah, it takes you know, money out yeah. of the equation. If I had no money, uh, we'd yeah. still be doing yeah. what we do. It's, if we won the Powerball. Yeah. Uh, I mean, th- this is what blows my mind. The, the people with all this wealth. Um, all that I w- want for myself and my family is a roof over my head and food on the table and my and my family. Yeah, and we, you know everything else is extra. Okay. Not not even the uh, yeah yeah. You don't need to eat uh, you know porterhouse steak. You can have uh, you know ground beef. I mean, it, it's not gonna. It should not change you as a person. I, I mean, uh, it just it just uh, the only thing money does is keep the wolf away from the door and allows you to function. You know, in the manner in which you, it, it just it just allows you to, to, to another day of functioning in terms of you know getting your bills paid and such. But but yeah, it shouldn't change you. It should it, 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 no. I mean, it shouldn't. No, it it the only thing it should, I mean really um, taking care of each other is the most important thing to do on this. You know, how many people can you help with with money and right? And, and we do I our mean, best. To, you know, we, we you look at the government waste. And if the government were to spend the money it collects properly, it could pay. It, nobody mm-hmm. in the world could, would mm-hmm. starve. Nobody in the world would be mm-hmm. home. But it's just trying to kill that, everybody on the planet. Yeah, yeah. Or finding ways to kill everybody. You know, you know what yeah. I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I know. It's amazing. Um, mm-hmm. These people do not care about. I any- just love you. I lo- I love you guys, and you guys keep doing what you do. And, uh, I'm just I'm giving you my vote of confidence, and who who dwells with me, uh, you guys just keep doing a good job. <laughs> well, thank you so very I much. Know. God God bless you, and thanks for your call. It's it's great to great to yeah, hear from you. I thank and, you guys and, too. And definitely send a uh, send a forty five or an eight track. If no, uh, seriously, uh, we'd love I to hear. Will. I definitely, we're going to, we're going to get it done and I'll get some, some stuff, uh, recorded. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I, I've been doing this all my life and, uh, and I, well, I know that it's time to, uh, not for me to arrive. Uh, it's time for some of these gifts to be, uh, given out, uh, it's just that way. Uh, well, God, yeah. God bless you, my friend. God, just God bless you. And, All and right, hey, I'll talk to you guys good. later. Okay. All right, brother. Well, All Joe, right. that's great. Yeah, great, great call. You know, and it's, call her when when uh, and I cut them off. But yeah, you know, call us back um, when you get that complete, and uh, you know, we'll play it on the air and. Come yeah, on and talk true. about yeah. it. Talk that's about right. what inspired you to do it and how you you did it. And, right on, man. Um, Actually, uh, an interesting side note here, just one second before we go to another call. Um, during Thanksgiving, I went to a, a little reunion, family reunion for my wife's family. And uh, her, uh, my wife's family, they're very spiritual. Uh, and uh, one of her aunts wrote a book on um, Christianity in today in America. And uh, she was a, a publisher and it's going to be released. And she, I asked her if she wanted to come on the show, you know, to talk about it. Cause, and, you know, she was really excited, right. but, um, it's great to see people doing things that, you know, to create real change. There are so many people out there that, that listen to us and that don't even listen to us. Don't even know we exist, but so many people out there with such, there are so many talented. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, and I promise you, if you're listening to the show, I know you've got talent that, 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 you're talented in your own way, in your own area. Yeah. Uh, just as as much as you are leaders, you're you're talented in something. And God has bestowed those gifts upon uh, each of us. It's it's just great to 
um, and, and we should celebrate the, 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 those talents that we have. Absolutely, we should. And uh, not only should we celebrate them, we should be thankful. Sharing. Uh, you know, so thankful for them and sharing them. Uh, we're going to go to area code. Uh, let's see. Area code 306. Coming to you next. You're live on the Hagman and Hagman Report. Good evening, guys. How are Good you evening. This evening. Very well. What's up? Oh, well, we all are. That's a good thing. Thanks <laughs> to God. Praise, <laughs> praise is due. Um, I, I'm just calling in again. You know, thanks for what you guys do. Thanks for staying on the air. Um, say hi to the chat room tonight. Everybody in there seems to be having a good time. Was well, um. Good. I guess the one thing that I that I've really noticed uh, is that just yeah, people have really become very self-absorbed, and, and it's not so much that it's surprising or that it's a new thing; it's just magnified and multiplied. And I think that the closer that we get to this date that's been projected into the future for us uh, and shoveled down our throats ad nauseum. Is uh, it's just going to ramp up the fear in people? The, the the fear in the people that don't have an understanding of some of these things are going to need to happen before Christ can return and and we get to see that salvation. You, you, you know it, that's that's right. I, I agree with you. And you, you said it's, uh, that self uh, absorption has become magnified. And I, and I was thinking back over, uh, you, you know, I, one of my greatest pleasures. Uh, greatest things I do. Uh, I, lo- I love to walk my dog, and I love to walk my dog very early in the morning. You know, before uh, you know, like four in the morning, five in the morning, whatever. And, and I was thinking, mm-hmm. you know, if you can remember back in, we'll say the nineteen eighty-two, eighty-three, eighty-four, eighty-five, in that time period. You know, and and, and then you remember the early nineties and the mid nineties. There wasn't really a whole lot of of feel to the texture of the years. If if, if the years or this period of time had texture, that texture kind of was about the same. But suddenly, after after nine eleven, that texture, if it was sandpaper, it went from fine grit to coarse. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. now now we it's beyond coarse. It's it's You're even transformed the the now. Yes, yes. So now, yes, everything has changed, and it's changing rapidly. And I, I guess if, that's the best I can do is a mental image or a mental picture there. So, but uh, that's kind of what I was thinking about and how quickly that has changed. Mm-hmm. No, and and I think it's just going to increase in the next in the next couple of weeks here as we approach that date, and. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like it, it'll come and go. You know, uh, there will be events that take place, I'm sure, but that won't be because a calendar is ending or because uh, they said that that was going to take place. It'll be entirely because governments and and individuals that control those governments have colluded together and and come up with this plan. Which you know, a, a lot of people feel that maybe this is we're entering that time of. There's going to be that great deception. There's a few, you yeah. know different avenues that people are taking to get to that route. Whether it be you know aliens coming back to to bring us the uh, rapture sort of thing, or whether it just be you know asteroids falling on the planet and we are destroyed. But I see the government getting ready for all sorts of different things and calling from Canada. Um, I had never in my time on this earth, living in this country and all the provinces that I've lived in, never seen them transport labs on the highway with personnel and barrels loaded until the 16th of November. They've always been transported on trains or tractor trailers that I've noticed. And just today in our local paper, they actually had a picture and a little write-up on one of the back corners of the page saying that... uh, you know, these guys were traveling through from one base to another base for training operations. Well, those two bases are roughly, by that highway, would be about eight hours apart. 
through two provinces. So that's a lot of people that get to see military uh, vehicles driving on public highways loaded for bear. And the picture that was taken and posted in the paper is from this Monday, December, not the pictures that I took back in November. And it's just really, it's unnerving for a lot of people, right? Because they don't understand what could be coming because they haven't decided to research it for themselves or look into what is going on with them in the world. Yep. Yeah, so many people lack that motivation to seek the information and truth for themselves. Uh, They just rely on other people to... Uh, give them that information, and those other people, uh, by design, are feeding them disinformation. I saw this on Drudge here. There's two headlines on the top. Mine apocalypse. Panic spreads as December 21st nears. Also, Russia residents buy up tin goods and matches ahead of apocalypse. Um, And my, my problem with this is, and you mentioned about the New Age, this is, aside from the fear mongering, This is helping the New Age religion, the false um, religion, religions, the satanic religions, uh, further their agenda with what they're doing by reporting these things the way they are. But yet they'll call what, uh, Dad, you write about Benghazi, fear-mongering, and it's the (laughs) truth. Yet um, this Mayan calendar stuff that, you know, nobody really knows what it is. It's just a calendar and uh, nobody can be 100% sure that they've translated it properly, but uh, everybody has to worry about the end of the world because their calendar restarts on that day. It's just it's it's so just, backwards. Yeah, people have to understand, though. There's, you know, okay, there's the Babylonian, there's a the Gregorian calendar, the, or a Georgian Did I say that right? A Georgian calendar, Gregorian, Georgian calendar, Gregorian calendar, whatever. Mm-hmm. Gregorian. Thank you. And, and then there's the uh, Babylonian calendar. Then there's the Jewish calendar. They're all different. As a matter of fact, um, it's right now in the Babylonian calendar, we're in the year 2000. I, I was just thinking we should do a show. I'll okay. set it up now for the 22nd. Uh, because well, it, what are all the people going to say who, who believe? Look, you know, what's going to happen on the 21st is it's going to change to the 22nd with the, you know, at midnight. So, uh, it, it, and they're going to pick up a new New Age book and find a new ideology that yeah. will match what they're comfortable believing. Because, like I said, I did not come to to unite people. I came to be a sword, you know, brother against brother and household against household. It's, yeah, people well, are uncomfortable with the Jesus makes people uncomfortable because it forces them to introspectively look into themselves and see that, hey, guess what? I'm not as cool as I think I am. I I have sin in my life, and I, you know, struggle with things, and yeah, I'm human, and I have to make that realization, and most people aren't ready to do that, and especially when they're so plugged in to their iPhones and iPods, and, I, and, and I'm guilty of it too from time to time because I love listening to your show on my iPhone because I can travel around with it. Hey, you are, are so right in, in what you just said, and uh, you know, unplugging from the the system, it, it's uh, as far as using these devices. Um, I don't think that we need to unplug completely, but uh, the purposes that what we use them for uh, definitely need to be um, looked at. You know, we I, I think. Um, you know, listening to Rick Wiles or Pastor Paul Begley on on my phone, having that ability is awesome. That technology is awesome. Well, like, like anything else, uh, uh, it can be used for good or it can be used for evil. I mean, you could take a phone and and, and uh, beat somebody over the head with the phone, right. and it becomes an uh, instrument of evil. Or you can right. you can use that same device and listen to Bible verses. Use a car to drive to work, or you can use a car to run somebody over. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Joe, you've done both. Yeah. So, and, and it's call, the intent behind the operator. It's the it's what the operator of that piece of technology is is willing to permit themselves to do. Yeah, and what you said about about Jesus uh, bringing divide. Um, yeah, the people when that is brought up, uh, brother against brother, father against daughter, 
it's not because Jesus wants to come and divide no, the family. It's it because he's coming the in people as a warrior. Who truly believe in him will not waver, and because they won't waver, the other people will be upset to the point that it will cause that division. Even though the message it's is because of that peace of the Holy yeah. Spirit. It, yeah. it, that's all it is. is. People don't, like the one caller said, people don't want to open themselves up to the Spirit. They're afraid of that power, and it's because of years of dogmatic education that we've been taught to think that we're helpless and mindless and serfs or go back, you know, go back to the field and let, let them go back to their castles. We're powerless. But Christ didn't come to, to, to preach that. We were given power in his name, through his blood, by his authority. You know, that's... Right on. Amen. Right on. God bless you, my friend. Thank you so much for, for your spate of wisdom there and, and for your call. We appreciate it. Have a great, great night. Wow. Yeah, God bless oh, you. you. No, God God bless we... you and the show. Like, it's All right. Incredible. Incredible. Thank you much. We're doing our best. And that's it, folks. i, I got to tell you, we're doing our best. We do our best every night. And uh, thank you for your belief and trust in us. And, and, and we mean that from the bottom of our hearts. By the way, we do pick up a few people now and again. I just want to just want to let people know. Y- you might hear things from people or see things written on the Internet about us. Uh, I, I got to tell you, um, I remember several years ago, uh, I can tell you stories that would just curl your hair in terms of people that would. That, but we've been picking, picking up some people who have been attacking us publicly for whatever reason that we don't even know. We don't even know, and they're attacking us publicly. So if you happen to see that, and you say, what's this all about? Well, hey, we don't know either, okay? So j- just kind of a word of advice. and Yeah. Uh, because we actually... I mean, I've seen comments on Facebook because uh, stating, you know, we refuse, we uh, don't teach something, a cert- don't teach a, or talk about a scripture a certain way that we're not true Christians and we, how dare we use the name of Jesus. Uh, yeah. We, I mean, yeah. we've seen... And that's uh, picking up. And, and folks, yeah, I understand this, please. I, the, more, just, the more effective we think we're getting, the more uh, the, the, the vicious, more vicious the attacks are. Or the, 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 the more, um, the, the more well, uh, not well known, but the more exposed we become uh, with, you know, the, the bigger we get, the more people are shooting at us, which is fine. Yeah, I mean, it but just understand that makes no difference to me. Uh, what bothers me about it is maybe not understanding where they're coming from. Um, oh, and we try sometimes. I, I wish people would call in and and just ask us, hey, uh, you know, is this true or is this what you're trying to do or get you know, give us advice instead of. Well, yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're acting. Well, let me just say this because Joe won't, uh, uh, but but one in particular, um, somehow one somebody interested in the show got uh, his uh, phone number, Joe's phone number, which is fine because it it, it does. It's no, it, I love it, talking to people, right? But but uh, this person called him, uh, I think it was forty seven times in the course of uh, a day, maybe a day and a half. Not that, many, the, that not that many times, but. Uh, let's say at least six or seven calls throughout the one night, middle yeah, of the like night, like three, two, three, four in the morning. But I thought it was oh, there were te- other text messages. And, but yeah, it, and then uh, accusing me of uh, you know not covering news that they topic, wanted to yeah. talk about. Right. I mean, you know, it, things are important. People do have uh, information to share, but you know, it's difficult to cover it all. And uh, when people demand you do something because they want you to do it. That goes back to what I said. People won't, I mean, the, the person we're referring to has all this information and has had it for months. What are, why don't they do something about it? Why are you just so disappointed that other people won't help you instead it's, of the it's fact more, that you won't help you yourself? Don't, yeah, if you don't cover this topic, you're not a Christian. Right. And if you don't, if you don't talk about this, and here are, here are the facts, well, well, wait a minute. Not even, you know, no, that was never here. <laughs> oh, okay, well, here's what you need to look at. But 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 it's, see, it, 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 we're getting this here at the, at my office. I mean, the, the phone rings, and there are people on the phone saying some pretty odd things. But you know what? It, it, it's okay. And at, when I when I read those messages, when we get them, it's frustrating at first. But 
I feel bad for people because I do want to help, you know, with what, what they think is important, what is important. And it, it probably does need to be talked about, but it's not, I mean, the way you, being approached, you'd think that, uh, you know, somebody just launched nuclear weapons, you know, somewhere. <laughs> it, 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 it's <laughs> an element of uh, almost uh, uh, stalking well, of and course, yeah. harassment because yeah. you won't do what somebody else wants you to do. And, on their time, and, and I, I don't think I, I don't think I've mentioned this, but it's kind of funny now. It was not funny at the time. Uh, I, I, I uh, a few a number of years ago, I was contacted. Uh, I folks, I don't know if I told you this or not, but it really doesn't matter. It's, it's more of a humorous thing. Uh, I was contacted by a gentleman who uh, said he had very important information for me, and and I and I get calls like this all the time, and I, I do my best to screen them and whatever. And, uh, at the time, Steve, in fact, I was talking to Steve one time, and he said, don't meet him, do not meet him. Well, Steve was right, because um, he, he wanted to, to he wanted to set up a meeting. And anyway, the, to make a long story short, he was caught in an airport uh, headed to my city dressed as a woman uh, with, a, uh, with a Bowie knife um, on his person, uh, headed to come see me and to give me some information. I can only imagine what that information was um, at the time. I, I was not quite informed as to what the topic might have been. But apparently, you know, you just can't make this stuff up, okay? So our lives are pretty interesting. All right. It is. and But it, it, it's disheartening to see people like that because it, it, they – and none of us are perfect. I'm far from perfect. I'm – probably, you know, worse than most people, but, um, to see somebody say, Oh, you're not a Christian if you don't do this. And then at the same time, they're swearing at you, calling you names, right? The, that the disconnect there, um, it, it's so aggravating because then the, I know this person isn't an idiot. They have intelligence, but it's not, I mean, maybe it's a matter of spiritual well, growth. Yeah, but, I mean, there's a lot of components to things like this, but it's, it's, it's almost, well, you know, look, we all have, uh, we all have, we're off so far off topic, it's yeah. kind of funny, sorry. It's okay, it's Friday. I uh, expected to get off topic. We're going to go to, uh, we have a couple more minutes, so we're going to try and make, get to as many phone calls as we can. We're going to go to Jason first. Jason, you're live on the Hagman and Hagman Report. How's it going? God bless you guys. Wow, Doug, it sounds like you have one of those TSA perverts that wanted to meet you. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Wig and pantyhose and a Bowie knife. Go figure. All right. My God. Well, we got to pray for people like that, that's for sure. Anyway... The reason I wanted to get on tonight with you guys is because I wanted to just give everybody hope at this point because we see all this crazy stuff in the news. I mean, we literally have articles now that could, you could basically take Scripture from the Bible and cut and paste it and put it in the paper. I mean, we have, we have articles saying that they, they're thinking about nuking Damascus. <laughs> I mean, really? I mean, we're seeing that now. I mean, it's right out in the open. If, if I'm sure, I think, uh, Doug, that you've been on with Joyce Riley, so you know her, right? Yes, yes. Right, the Power Hour. Well, if if people listen to her first hour today, the, she had an article where they literally were talking about nuking Damascus, and it, it you know, they link it to scripture too. So. I just want to give uh, some hope to people out there. You know, we, we as the body of Christ, we're going to get excited by seeing this stuff and, because we know the end is nigh. But everybody else that might not believe that's in your life is going to shun you for what you're believing. So, uh, what you, you, you know, you see hope in it. They see nothing but damnation. So all we can do, guys, is just keep on the straight and narrow path of the blood of Jesus and keep watching, and shows like yours, it's, you guys are the best thing on. That's all I'm going to say, all right? Well, the thanks. best thing on. Hey, don't tell yourself short, Jason. Yeah, and, and the check's in the mail for you, Jason, for saying that. Thanks, buddy. No, uh, no, it's, no, it's not no, about God, being the best. The truth. It is about getting the word out. You are doing an excellent job. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, you you are you got your own show. You're getting awesome guests. Uh, you know, Lindsey Williams to Doc Marquis to. I mean, you're doing a tremendous Look, job. We all have Jason. to keep. We, we all have to work together, Jason, because uh, here's what we need to do. We need to get, get our act. Uh, we we need to coordinate our efforts to reach as many people as possible to get the word out there Amen. to let let people know what's going on. Because I'll tell you what, time is short. The storm is coming, and uh, we're against the outside wall of that storm right now. Amen. And I just want to give all glory to God, number one, and number two, Mr. Philip Kirshner. I'm telling you, he is very aggressive, and he's doing it all. So, very good. <laughs> that's well, it. God, bless, I, that, that, God bless you guys. Bye. Thanks. Have a good night. Dude. Right. We're gonna go to one more call. We got. Yeah, we. Uh, sorry about that. We ran out of time. Is my verbose verbosity, I suppose, that caused all this. We have on the line with us, uh, Carrie. Carrie, you're live on the Hagman. Yeah, Hagman. Carrie by Grace. It's Carrie. Yep. Hey. Um, I want to just bring something up real quick. Doug, you mentioned sandpaper, and um, I loved the caller from Canada. He he really inspired me. And then uh, Joe followed up talking about people being sort of abrasive. I mean, those are my words, not yours. Um, and my husband taught me something a long time ago when I was not walking in the spirit. I was still living in sin, and people would get on my nerves and I would just go nuts. I was just like, oh, they're driving me crazy. And he'd just look at me and say, honey, they're sandpaper. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, honey, they're sandpaper. They're, they're, they're rubbing off your rough edges, making you smoother. And <laughs> that analogy has helped me so much. When somebody rubs me the wrong way, I start, you know, looking within and saying, okay, what is it about me that, that, I might need to change so that that doesn't bug me because I don't know. Anyway, that was kind of a tangent about sandpaper, but what I was calling to do was address the room. Hi, roomies. <laughs> um, I, have, uh, I love you all so much and have learned in such a short amount of time um, so many of the fruits of the Spirit. Um, I'm going to just read real quick. Um, the Spirit, I, I mean, God's had me in Galatians 5 for three days, and I guess this is why. But I'm going to read real quickly three verses. I know we don't have much time. Sure, Verse go ahead. 14, chapter 5 of Galatians. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say... Then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I just, that has just resonated so loud. And, you know, and Galatians chapter 5 is the chapter that has the fruits of the Spirit. And, you know, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And I I just really ask myself, am I doing this in, in love? And, you know, by honoring God's command and, and being joyful and I, you know, being peaceful or, or at least helping with the peace process in my family and in my community. And so all these things are just such wonderful nourishment for our souls. You know, and then when we have the flip side of the coin where, you know, if we're living in the flesh, we've got things like, you know, adultery and fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness and idolatry and witchcraft and hatred and, you know, variance and emulations and wrath and strife. I mean, you know, it goes on and on and, and you look at that and you go, wow, that's all the news of today. And that's what Satan wants us to look at. He wants us to look only at verses 19 and 20 and 21. He doesn't want us to get past that down there to 22 and 23. So he keeps us busy with all that stuff. And well yes, it's important to stay on top of what's going on, but I have learned that just as the election and all that's going on just has brought such a deep oppression and sickness in the air, well, there's, there's good coming. God would not let us go through this without giving us hope and well, joy and love and 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 we got to stick together, and we are. We're building the the remnant team there in the room. <laughs> there, there you go, and and, and that that's why I'm so thankful that we have that that uh, room. A lot, a lot of stations don't. 
a lot of shows don't. We have that, and, and I thank everyone for being so understanding and, and, and ninety uh, seconds, uh, you know, helpful with one another. But Carrie, remember this: uh, you know, sandpaper keeps the rust off things, keeps the rust off you, and also too, under pressure, you know, diamonds are made under pressure. So um, just want to say that as well. That is great advice. I appreciate that. I will add that to my list. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are doing a great job, and God bless you. And Ruby, I'll see you in a minute. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Carrie. Thanks. Joe, we're well in the program. Seconds. Yeah, we are. The show went so fast. That's because, um, I, again, I, my mouth just wouldn't stop. So No, and you are uh, really, I can see the, the growth and the hunger for knowledge and, and the uh, search, the searching Thanks, for for the truth, Thanks, and, and getting behind these issues that you wouldn't dare talk about, you know, four years ago. It, it is awesome. Time's too short to be uh, messing around. We got to get right to the heart of the matter. So, folks, have a great weekend. God bless you all. Don't forget next Wednesday, Pastor Williams. And if uh, things go hot, by the way, uh, check our website. We will be on the air this weekend if things go hot. Yeah, if anything major happens. Uh, we definitely will be on the air and we want to thank each and every one of you for joining us and listening. We could not do this without you. Ten seconds. Have a great night and God bless. Thank you for using blog talk radio.